This is the Modern Eater Show. Piping hot and delicious. The Modern Eater. Food, 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 food. Come and get it. And now your host. All right, you're hot. Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. You better believe it. Here it is, live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, the Modern Eater Show on a snowy Saturday evening. I'm love. You know, uh, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Little Rich Schneider. If you're going to get snowed in, why not do it with some food, some libations, and some great friends? Yeah, one of the best chefs in town. That would be the way to get snowed in. You've got a, a room full of booze, some great chefs with all this kind of fish. Food. We've got our little rich with Rockalita's tortillas. We'll be eating nachos till the cows come home. <laughs> and uh, but the, but the, one of the most important and the, the I think the prize tonight is Chris Starkus. Chris Starkus from Urban Farmer. Uh, hello and welcome to the Modern Eater Show. Guys, <coughs> excuse me. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Again. I think we've had you on uh, literally by phone from your kitchen. Yes, you before. have. Yeah. Uh, now you're in our kitchen, Studio Kitchen, Colorado, and I got to tell you, if I'm going to get snowed in, how many people can say I'm snowed in with Chris Starkus, <laughs> right? <laughs> About yeah, and uh, a whole bunch of great yeah. food. Yeah. Personal chef. Well, I uh, bet his wife could say that, Greg. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me again. It's been uh, it's nice to be in here today, and, and really the first time in the studio kitchen. So we're going to cover a lot of ground, and yeah. this is so cool. I got to tell you. So as we uh, welcome Chris back to the show, and from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, you're going to have a good time watching on Facebook as well as listening on our local affiliate 6:30 KHOW on uh, iHeartRadio. But uh, check it out on Facebook. I'm going to go to our the Modern Eater Facebook page. And share it. And I, I would encourage people out there in radio land, go into this video realm that we've opened the door to, which is Facebook, and soon to be more YouTube as well. But go out there and check this out and share it with your friends because I think like right now, you're getting to watch Chris butcher one of these beautiful trout. You get to watch these two. I mean, we've got a golden trout. We've got a big old rainbow trout. Hanging right behind us on our rotisserie. Here's what's cool. Yeah. As uh, our friends, I've got a couple of chef friends. That are, uh, people are going to be showing up throughout because, you know, traffic, weather, the oh, whole yeah. night. We're, we're yeah. in Denver, Colorado. So I'm sharing this to my Facebook page. But what's really cool is I already see an influx of Facebook users because they're sitting at home snowed in <laughs> and jealous that they're yeah. uh, not with us here tonight. Yeah. And so when I was sitting with, um, first of all, Chris Starkis, I, I looked at Chris and I said, Chris, um, you're insane. Insane in that way of you figured it out. It's that side of when I see these farmers, when we go visit them on our road trip, Brian, and we see these farmers and they're, they're off the grid and they, they live off their, they curate their land to be exactly what they want it to be. Um, they farm, they source right to their table. The, the food and the ingredient, as you say, well, they gave up the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And they went in on this journey to something that is so unimaginable to everybody in this urban lifestyle of the everyday that we go down. And you look at Chris Starkis and, and the things that he does as far as sustainability, as far as good sourcing, as far as good food, as far as good cooking techniques that you figured it out, Chris, at a very early age of, what, uh, 49? Ooh, 38. Whoa, babe. 38, yeah, 39 easy. this year. I just oh, wanted to you. give him up because uh, I thought he was 28. <laughs> <laughs> but to figure that out early, Chris, and, and, and truly, um, when I say that, I mean that as the highest accolades to you, you, that you truly give care to every aspect of food. Thank you. Yeah. Where I, does that come from? You know, we're going to talk about a little later on, but having Lost Creek Micro Farm and I've been doing gardening and farming and beekeeping really keeps you with the seasons and, and the understanding of why your food should be local and why you should be supporting people growing and doing the right thing. Because, uh, I mean, I think we talked about it last show, if, if the romaine E. coli recall doesn't get snap you into place of knowing where your food comes from, then I don't know what will. And so that really, really does it for me. You know, health food is medicine 100 percent is what myself and my family and what i practice at the restaurant that's kind of all encompassing chris I, I got a big question though for him Greg. yeah I just how are you so grounded though you i mean listen folks over the, He's in the, the, zone. the radio I'm waves telling you, chris is i in mean the zone. i good question good i call them pharma chefs and people that yeah. truly believe in their food that more beyond uh medicating yourself so taking a look at what, what are you eating where's it coming from mm. just making it the most simplistic form 
possible into your life is that you're, you're all in. You pushed your chips in, and there you are. 100%, yeah. We came down here in Denver, uh, I guess, two years now. Uh, the restaurant, Urban Farmer, has been open for about a year and a half. And each time we've been, I mean, to be honest, I mean, this is how we met Kermit through you guys. You know, you, I, I was going to do some salmon today and some sustainable salmon. And you said, hey, why don't I hook you up with Kermit? And we got a sample, and it's been great. So I'm excited to talk with him a little bit more later on, too. But that's the thing is that when you find people that are just as passionate as mm -hmm. myself, it's easy to put that protein, that cocktail on the menu and share that story with everybody. I mean, we have so many stories tonight to tell, um, and that's a lot of, I think, A, what keeps me grounded is that I cannot do this by myself. I have a team, my uh, chef de cuisine, Ryan's here tonight to help me big out Ryan. as well. Yeah. Big, big Ryan. <laughs> known as Tree, as you see on his <laughs> ACS hat. Is he really uh, known he is, as 100%. <laughs> Everyone will know exactly who we're talking about. Tree's the man. Yeah. Just, um, and just, same type of thing, you know, you just need a team around you. That's the only way you can do it, and that's the only way I think you can re remain grounded. Good well, people. And, Chris, I call you more. I mean, I love where Greg has gone with that with the Pharma Chef just because of mm -hmm. the fact that you're bringing the health and wellness into our food. But I look at you guys as like these next-level chefs, somebody who is – you've gone out there and, you know, made friends with my friends, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm on the distribution side. And these farmers have been people that th – these are like I feel the voice of the farmer my whole career. But you are like the, almost the voice of what they were growing. You were the <laughs> yeah. voice. I mean, yeah. seriously, I, Chris, I, I, I have a – I've known you for a couple of years, and you're new to town, and – you know, I, I've been around. Yeah. You know, I've been in Denver for longer than 25 years. I've been in just food for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And you've really, you have grown on me, Chris, in a way that I, I have so much respect for you. Thank and you. that's why I give you that next level thing because you're doing stuff growing. So where I went off on my tangent is your Jim Hammond's mushrooms. You've got them yep. growing in the basement of the Urban Farmer or the Oxford Hotel. Yes. You've got your bees on the roof of the Oxford Hotel. Right. You have incorporated your own, your own microgreens into <laughs> the Oxford Hotel. And not even in, like tonight, such mad respect with your, your you've got lip balm that you are harvesting <laughs> yeah. from your bees from the wax, and you're selling that at the Oxford Hotel. This is a guy who is like, I mean, I, 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 there's very few people in town that I consider this next level, and you are it. Chris. So well, let, thank you. Let's step off smartly, and uh, Chef Chris Starkis, a farmer, a beekeeper, a sustainability advocate. Um, Chris, you, sustainability is so big for you, and I think a, a lot of people as well. First of all, Little Rich, what's sustainability mean to you? Well, it, I mean, it starts uh, from the farm. It starts to us at Rockalitas. Mm -hmm. It's doing the wind-generated uh, electricity. We've been doing it for a long time. But it, it also means being willing to, willing to put your checkbook where your mouth is. Yep. And that sometimes you've got to write a bigger check. And you've got to absorb that. But if you want to make a stance, if you want to be an example, then that's what you've got to do. That strikes me, uh, Chris. Talk about yourself uh, let's start at the beginning like alice in wonderland urban farmer here you are what a year and a half two two years here in denver yes I, um, yeah go I was, back to see go, he was on the northwest right? <laughs> yeah where are you from? there's a deeper a so, uh, little deeper thing yeah portland oregon is where we came from uh, the original urban farmer is there i was chef de cuisine there for about four and a half years um i built the rooftop gardens there and started beekeeping uh, and built the rooftop apiary to about six um beehives up there so that's kind of where it came from, was like really looking at how can we grow these things? How can I do it, obviously, from the rooftop down and make it hyper-local? What's going to make the biggest impact, not only for not only myself, but flavor on the, on the table and, and, of course, to the guests? How do you share that? And so when we brought that to Denver, there were some challenges we had in Portland of, you know, being able to bring so many people to the rooftop and see the bees and things like that because of, you know, liability, right? But that's why we did the mushrooms in the restaurant. That's why we do the microgreens in the window. So people can see without needing to know me what is going on at Urban Farmer. And so that's kind of where it all encompassing came from. And then the sustainability side was, you know, that's the way I work at, at, at the restaurant is, is recycling, compost, things like that. Did you grow up that way as a kid? You know, we, yes, we recycled and stuff, but the, the deeper I got into it, no. Uh, that's been more of, a, of, of an adult thing. And honestly, I Who give turned you on? My wife. Your wife? My wife. 100%. Congratulations, she, man. <laughs> thank you. Uh, she, you know, thinks a lot deeper and really goes, uh, really goes hardcore in a lot of things. And um, as we talk and I come home, you know, I'm, we're having a cocktail or, or wine, going over, hey, what is the next thing? What can we do? I mean, we're not a small restaurant or urban farm. We're 249 seats. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of these things that we're doing, we're always seeing it like, 
40 seat restaurants, 60 seat restaurants. How can we do it in a larger format and, and, and really do it right? How can you? Well, by, you know, we're planning to see with the next, the next round of chefs as Ryan is here tonight, but also cooks. You know, that's, it starts with doing it right in the restaurant, really telling the staff why we're doing it. And like you said, I, I live this every day. This isn't like just a thing we talk about and do. And then when I leave work, I'm like, you know, trash in the earth. It's something that I do all the time, not only with my family, we compost at home. And so well, that resonates with not only the front and back of the house, but also the next generation of cooks that are coming in. They're learning it and they're going to be doing it in their kitchens as they grow, which is kind of rewarding for me, not only just at one location, but beyond. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. Uh, I want to do uh, Chris Starkis. First of all, um, Chef Chris Starkis here from Urban Farmers, and uh, we're going to touch on Lost Creek Micro Farms. Uh, The question that I want to pose to you that we'll have you answer after the break, when we take a look at your inspirations and what you're doing right now, that when we come back, here's what I want to talk about. You have this inspiration of your thoughts, but on a level of, let's face it, Sage Restaurant Group. Mm-hmm. It's a, you're within a machine, and we talked a little earlier about, Chris, how, how do you keep people in line of your thought process? And you say, uh, let's go, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, come follow me, and by the time you're there, because there are leaders in this industry, mm-hmm. and there are followers, and you're cutting new road, as far as I can see. And a lot of your philosophies and what you're doing Um, Cutting new road is very difficult sometimes. So with Urban Farmer and what you're doing with um, basically Denver and and what we see in this food scene right now is I want to ask you, we're going to come back and talk to Chris Starkis about how do you continue to kick the rock down the road? How do you progress this mindset to where it resonates with other people that are like, I just want to go have a steak? (laughs) I well, you want, can get that, but I, I, there's, I, Chris is doing it, man. I know, and I think I, that that I, thought process is very interesting, and I want to touch upon that and also talk about these projects that's going on beyond our uh, urban farmer with Chris with uh, Lost Creek Micro Farms. We'll come back. We'll take that break right now. We are at Studio Kitchen Colorado on a snowy Saturday evening. This type of food, when we talk about hyper-local, Brian, all the time, I think that if somebody has a product a service, or a business here locally that they're offering you, you have an obligation to support your community, even if that price tag is a little bit more. It's an interesting proposition, but I believe in it wholeheartedly, and um, hyper-local is really where it's at. So how do you do business and still continue to be a viable company? We'll come back, we'll answer those questions, and much, much more right here on the Modern Eater Show from iHeartRadio. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun photos and Thank videos. Thank you, Greg. Just search that the was a great Eater first or check out segment with Chris. Holy the cow. The Chris Eater. is deep. Speaking of deep and hyper-local, though, I've got one of our favorites right here, Chef Cheeto. Uh, tell us about what you've been working on to get even more hyper-local. We've got about 40 seconds. Then we're going to fly a little deeper for our Facebook viewers. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, Las Alicias, we're using now Colorado Mills oil. So, nice. yeah, we just started nice. that uh, with working with Zach Craner. Uh, what else? We're working with uh, Polidori Sausage. They're local. Great Getting our sausage and all our chorizo. Uh, we got Shamrock, all those local companies here at Las Alicias. So, you know, I'm using the, the hashtag, the hyper-local hashtag at Las Alicias there, too. So we love it. We love to support the local community. The economy, you know, and people, the local people come up and support us too. That's great, Cheeto. And you know, you're so influential. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna break from iHeart to uh, pay a couple bills. But we're gonna stay here online for Facebook for our Facebook fans. So we'll be back in just a flash. It's about quality. It's and about we're taste. Still here. We're it's still about here. passion Chido, Chido, Chido. infused uh, with American Facebook spirit. I rocker have been whiskey, at rocker rum, been, uh, rocker uh, vodka. Get ready for an original look. You're mixing the hyper local with truly international cooking. Oh yeah. Of I course. mean, people know you as a as a chef. Yep at Las Delicias, but you're way more than just that. You should see what this guy cooks. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about your international food. Oh man, international, it's pretty much everywhere. Indian food, Mexican food, uh, African food. You know, we go everywhere. I mean, we go, yeah, I've done pupusas. I've done pretty much 
everything, you know. We don't just do tacos and burritos. Yeah. You know what? I want you to do Italian food down here. One. Yeah, yeah. What about Let's pizza? You know, we've got of Jason uh, McGovern over at, at Crush. Crush. And uh, uh, what, you think you could uh, do yeah, a pie? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Of course I can do a pie. Oh, that would that would be incredible. Uh, refried beans in it, but let's do a pie. That would be incredible. Well, you know, also I'm going to use this moment to talk about pizza and talk about crust and talk about our newest sponsor, Ardent Mills. Oh, they are now. Yes, they they oh, came cool. they jumped on the ship this I'm past to go week. And, uh, tour that facility. Cold press in Lamar, you Colorado. Fly, whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock Growers Organic and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey, this is Brother Luck from Colorado Springs. All right, you ready? <laughs> Owner of 4 by Brother Luck and Lucky Dumpling. I mean, he's, he's a very, very impressive man. <laughs> and you're rocking with the Modern Eater Show on... All right, you're up. All right, yes, indeedy, Mr. Tweedy. Here we are on the Modern Eater Show, live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in on Facebook. It looks like we got a good crowd with us here tonight. Thank you, Zach Kreider. Cold night. Everyone's staying home with their uh, aunt, uh, which... Uh, Aunt who, who? Aunt Witch. Who's I don't got have some an cold, Aunt Witch. Uh, she's, you know, cold is my Aunt Witch. She doesn't have sake <laughs> like we do. <laughs> Chris Stark is from Urban Farmer. I see Chef Cheeto coming in the door right now. Uh, things are filling up. It's a snowy evening. Oh, did you evening. see Ben Gettinger pop in the door? Ben's here? All yeah. Right. All right. Okay, cool. Spice things are guy? shaping up right here, and Urban Farmer is the name of the game. So as we broke off, and we're going to get into just food-related things here in a minute, but I think the mindset is worth uh just kind of doing a backtrack. So as you are going into this business, because you got to remember, we're all in business, right? Agree, yep. Business versus ethics versus sourcing versus doing the right thing. Chris, how do you do that in the position that you're in right now? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a fine line, and we basically have to pick and choose everything we want to do. There are certain things, i.e., we have a 100% compostable to-go program, and that's like... It, hands down got to be what we do, right? There's no questions asked. And, it, and a business point is we actually have branded ones that are actually cheaper than what we were buying before, right? So that's something that we did. Um, but picking and choosing what you do as it translates to the guest. You know, we can sit here and, and th we can all geek out and we're going to all night and these are things that we love. The reality is people that come in the restaurant, like, like Ryan was saying, some people just want a steak, right? They're just going to come in and they're going to have a steak and potatoes. Now, it's my job to make sure it's the best one they ever had no matter mm -hmm. where they're going in Denver, number one. Number two is that if you're open to wanting to hear about all the reasons why it's the best one you ever had, then we're going to tell you. And so by pick and choosing exactly what, how it translates to the guests is, is how we keep it going, especially in a company like Sage Restaurant Group that's helped support that as well. I mean, that's, that's the honest truth. So when you have people, products, and services presented to you all the time, and you have an option to go mainstream oil versus Colorado Mills. You told me the other day in a conversation... Listen, I'm going with Colorado Mills right now for a lot of my in-house oils, yep. and that's a local product there. To be able to make those decisions, that's important to you, isn't it? 100%. And so specifically to Colorado Mills, I mean, we brought it, you know, Brian brought it in, we, we tasted it, um, and we seared up one scallop versus the other, and we, and we tasted it, and it was hands down tasted better. And so that's how it translates to the guests. I mean, you can't make that up. The price doesn't make that difference. If you're tasting it, then it's going to be the best scallop you yep. ever had. And you might not understand why, and that, that's okay. If you want to ask, that's fine, but I can, and I can tell you why, but you just need to leave the restaurant saying that's the best scallop I've ever had, and I'm not really sure why. That's fine. What's Lost Creek Micro Farms? Lost Creek Micro Farm is the farm that my wife and I run um, next to our house in Lakewood. Um, I should say my kids as well because they certainly help out. <laughs> um, the impetus behind that was I just love growing things, right, and, and having bees at the house, um, and then, of course, just picking out cool seeds to grow. And the first year we did it, we grew some cool stuff and it was awesome it was amazing and then we decided hey we want to do this in a way more awesome better way that we can grow for the restaurant um in addition to have a um we have a what do you call it like a little market that my kids help run as well because we kind of call it the new lemonade stand and so they understand you know i mean I, I used to wash cars and things like that when i was a kid so now they sell to the community they know people that come over they know our neighbor who likes the tomatoes and they know how to sell them and they know how to taste people on them um and because it, the food means uh, awesome things to them as well as far brian as well. This is why the Modern Eater Show is so refreshing to me because you hear Urban Farmer, right? I'm going to go eat at Urban Farmer tonight. Cool. Catchy name, the whole thing, you know. I'm buying it. We have an Urban Farmer 
with us with here. With us as well, with yes. With Chef Chris Stark. For them to land that kind of uh, integration in uh, not only brand awareness and name and name serving, but to bring a chef in that truly is urban farmer, that's something special. What is uh, kind of that ethos of, of urban farmer and you driving it in that direction? I mean, the ethos of urban farmer is just understanding, obviously, where your food comes from, number one, as, as, a, as a base understanding. Because when we looked at um, not only the steaks that we have on the menu, like all the different feeds, like there's not really one answer to what people love, whether it's grass-fed, wagyu, corn-fed. It's really like wine in that respect. It's what you like. And so by bringing it to the restaurant that way and building dishes in a certain spectrum, that's your steak and potatoes, as I was talking about before, or like our crispy octopus. You can try a chef-curated experience or just steak and potatoes and still be thrilled with it. And so what the urban farmer part of it, at least from my side, is understanding how those ingredients grow in seasonality and then making the most flavor that we can on a, on a plate. And sometimes it's not adding very much, like we're doing tonight with the trout. It's, it's good on its own, and that's something that I learned way back in the day when I was working at a two-star Michelin restaurant in Vegas, was the ingredients are A+. Plus. You cannot take a C ingredient and make an A-plus ingredient. It does not happen. Well, and that goes back, I think, to the soil, Chris. And it's, it's really funny because all night as I'm sitting across from you, I'm thinking about someone that I introduced Greg to. And so you are to food what my friend is to growing. And this is Tom McCracken. You're like this, this guy. I introduced Greg to some, a friend of mine that has, you know, had a big farm, had a big operation, helped me get to where I, I am today. Mm-hmm. I owe a lot to him mm-hmm. because he cared so much about the soil so it's like yep. you are to the food what he is to the soil of this is a guy who's uh, right now his wife, very similar story. His wife has a, a line of skincare products at Natural Grocers, right. started with a calendula flower. Yeah, yeah. And this <laughs> is just like, I mean, the stuff that you're doing, Chris, is you started with a bees and a honeycomb yep. and you're creating a blip bomb. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's, yep. I, I see Brian, so that's a many great, that's similarities a, That's here. a great lead-in of what I wanted to talk about because we look at this full circle of food and life, and we talk about, okay, growing your crops, harvesting your crops, uh, selling your crops, producing them, sending to a restaurant, having them eaten. What's the byproduct from that? What's, what, what's the after product? What's the composting? How do we put it back in the soil, and how do we start it over again? Chris, yeah. just riff on that. Well, I mean, that, we do that at the restaurant right now. I mean, with the composting, we actually get the soil back for our patio gardens uh, from Alpine as well. So that is full circle. And that's something that people can physically see. You know, uh, feeling it and seeing it when you're doing that is everyone, you get, uh, everyone can understand that. When I got bags, I'm saying, hey, this is from what we've been composting all year, guys. They get it. And that's, that's hands down what makes sense. How is that mindset changing? Are more people getting it? I believe they are. I believe that we're making a living off that, man. This hyper-local, knowing your food, knowing your farmer, knowing your distiller, knowing your brewer, Mm -hmm. knowing what you're putting into your body. People want the story that much more. If you're going to go spend the amount of money that you do on food and beverage every day, Mm -hmm. why not? Why is that catching on in a a remarkable pace? A remarkable pace. I think the reality is that more people, yes, are subscribing to it, but it's becoming more of, of a a better business choice, not only for your ethos of your company, but also, also the bottom line. So I really feel that's the reason why. You want to cook some food? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some food. What's in okay. store for us tonight? Tonight we have a, uh, we're, so we're using trout all the way through. And so part of the sustainability message is as we're breaking it down, as you can see on my board Look now, that. Um, we're going to have filet and we're going to have some waste here. And so the what wa- are you going to do with that? Most people throw that away. We're you gonna- and Kyle Mendenhall. <laughs> No deal. Yeah, no way. <laughs> You're we're not gonna, throwing that We're going to spoon it off. We're going to poach it tonight. Uh, as you can kind of see on this guy, too, we're going to poach it, and we're going to add it into a salmon rillette and put it on a, uh, our house English toast. Um, and then we're going to move into a crudo, because, uh, which is nice, like a sashi- sashimi-style uh, trout, because it's so beautiful. And I think that with some seasonal ingredients on there, apples and some beautiful vinegars and, and hemp seed and things like that, it makes it taste great because, again, it's healthy for you, um, getting those great oils on there. And then as our last one, we're going to grill off some trout. Um, with a uh, pear butter and romesco and, and broccolini, some beautiful uh, growers' organic produce tonight as well. So uh, a lot, a lot of stuff we're going on, but so I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's yeah. get into the food, yeah. right? Yeah. None better. I mean, Chris Stark is urban farmer, and I'm going to recruit him into, yeah, take off that thing. You, you have no idea what we're going to say. Hey, Chris, 
He's a good guy. I know. He, he, well, like I said earlier, he has really grown on me. You know, I met Chris, and he was new in town, and I've met a lot of chefs, chefs as pumped as he was and when I met him. So after now knowing him for a couple years, he's really walking the walk, and I love to see that with guys in town. I mean, that is awesome what he's doing at Urban Farmer. What, I mean, what he's doing with the local farms that we work with all the way around, man. Let's throw it to our guy. We're going to break with Little Rich. Little Rich, man, it's good to have you on the show right now. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Brian. I'm over here in the corner. We're talking, you know, a great segment with Chef Chris. Coming up soon, we're going to have Kermit from Amazing Frontier Trout, his Frontier Trout Ranch. You know, one of the things we're always trying to be here is education. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, we all know that if you watch this show more, you will be better in this industry. Where else can you learn so much in two hours? Nowhere. You can't go anywhere. No, you can't. So on this, we're going we're gonna, to uh, go ahead and take a break for our uh, iHeart listeners. You're going to listen to a couple commercials from some of our tremendous sponsors. And you know what? They've put their money where their mouth is. They're concerned about making you better for the industry. So we're going to take a break from that, and we're going to stay here with Facebook, dig deeper into education. I love it. Thank you, Reg. So, we still oh, got, we're still here with Real Facebook. Let's talk no about education. Out on Just yesterday, they had, they had the Colorado Pro Start competition at the Gaylord Hotel. We had high school students from all kinds of high schools all over the, all over the state doing management and culinary. And the quality that these kids are doing is unbelievable. We want you to help support the Colorado Restaurant Association, Colorado Restaurant Foundation, so we can make this program even better. Here's an interesting fact you may not know. The Pro Start program is all over the United States. It started right here in Colorado. So Colorado's known for education. The Modern Eater's known for education. We're going to go ahead and take a break so you can watch some of the spots. And thank you is the number one selling language learning app in Europe. Try it for yourself and see why Babbel is the quick way to get conversational in a new language like Spanish, French, or more. You can try Babbel for free. Go to Babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com or download the app to try it for free. That's Babbel.com. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, cold-pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey, it's Greg Holland back. Any more these days, when I go out to eat, I not only want to eat delicious food and drinks, but I also want to eat where I know my money is going to a local restaurant that I believe in. I believe in the Goods Restaurant on Colfax and Mark Whistler. The Goods is a community restaurant and bar with a menu focusing on vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, and keto options. Comfort food lovers, try the best burger on planet Earth. I love it. Eight ounces of grass-fed beef and never... 30. Hormones, antibiotics, or steroids. The Goods is truly a cultural melting pot, a family restaurant open to all. Their bar program is amazing. Saddle up at their long, luxurious bar, have a nice craft beer or a cocktail. Like their Facebook page and stay up on amazing events and specials going on throughout the week. Located on East Colfax, directly connected to the Tattered Cover Bookstore. Across from East High School with free parking and a garage in back. Look them up online, thegoodsrestaurant.com. I'll see you at the goods. Hi, everybody. This is Chef Carrie Barrett from Bardo here in Denver. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That sounds good. <laughs> and you are listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. Uh, yes, indeed. We are back here at Studio Kitchen Colorado. The Modern Eater show live tonight here with Chris Starkist from the Urban Farmer Kermit, Kermit Krantz from Frontier Trout Ranch. Our friend Zach Kreider is going to be here from Colorado Mills. Dan Hayward, I was just talking with him from Savory, Savory Spice Company. And one of the tastiest little things I've been having tonight from our friend William Stewart at Colorado Sake Co. is uh, pouring like five different flavors of a local sake here in the kitchen tonight. And it is tasty. 
But we're going to talk. Do you like food sake? now? I actually, I, re- I love it. I, I really do. I, I really do. I'm, I'm an alternative guy right now. I've been drinking tequilas for about a year now. Sake might serve you. You can't yes, really do the whiskey anymore. Exactly. I can't, and it's a darn shame. Um, but Not the really. sake. Well, I you mean, know. go with what your body tells you. Yeah, well, I would say that, but boy, my tongue tells me some of those whiskeys that we have here on the show. Some of our friends over at like Deer Creek and. Or uh, Bear Creek. Or Bear Creek. Yeah, or Bear Creek. <laughs> deer, deer Hammer, right? Is it Deer Hammer? Uh, we'll, we'll find <laughs> yeah. where that deer fits in. I um, love you, Brian. <laughs> uh, tonight's a very special night because Chris Stark is from Urban Farmers here with us, and we've been wanting to catch up with him for a while. Lost Creek Micro Farms. Kermit Krantz from Frontier Trout Ranch is going to join us in the next segment for In the Kitchen. And we have this uh, great grill provided by Proud Souls. Uh, look at what Did you they, ever just see that and just rip oh, something right off and just stop it, man. Stop put it right it. in your mouth like that. I mean, get out of here. That's that is tasty. That is love. Golden trout. That's love. delicious right there <laughs> off this rotisserie. So good product. Uh, Chris Sarkis rejoins us. We're going to assemble a dish right here. You like to do similar things. Plating is important. Putting things together is important. Tell us how you do it at the Urban Farmer. Absolutely. I mean, we do a lot of test, testing with each other. We'll cook for each other, all the chefs and I. Um, and we'll really start to tweak and tweak and tweak it how we like it, and how it shows off the product, how we want it to. Um, the dish that we put up for you guys here is the trout riette with some of the uh, grilled sourdough and a little bit of uh, pickled. Is uh, this available at Urban yeah, Farmer? Absolutely. This okay. is a, uh, seven days a week. We have brunch. So you, you can come in and get it. Um, and right, what I'm going to assemble right now is the trout crudo uh, that you guys have in front of you. as plated one. I'm going to plate one for the rest of the house here. So what we did was we basically just um, sliced it, took the skin off really quickly. Look at this. And, and uh, this is a raw Get on raw Facebook trout, Live right, right, right now. Chris, raw trout? This is a raw trout, yep. So we're going to do this a little bit more family style for the rest of the group here. Um, Sarah Krantz on Facebook Live. I'm assuming that that uh, it relations to Kermit. Yes, the, the fish is being in good use tonight. Frank Dominguez, wish I was there. Such a great time. Yes, indeed. Zach Kreider, um, we will be talking to you soon. Anthony, uh, Chris Starkis does an amazing job. Yes, he does. He's got to be one of the most meticulous chefs that I know. Um, Chris, where would that come from? Just your attention oh. to detail. <laughs> um, when I, again, when I was in Vegas, I did work at a two-star Michelin restaurant, and everything was was about every piece of the puzzle there. And so, bringing that to what we do three meal a day right now um, is a little bit diffi- more difficult. It takes a little bit more discipline because you have less people in the kitchen doing it. Um, but it makes an uh, overall beautiful dish. Describe what you're doing. So what we have here is a charred lemon and cilantro. Um, vinaigrette. So we're going to put that down as well. We've already we already marinated this one a little bit raw with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then this one's marinated with some dill and um, a little bit of vinegar as well. So this uh, trout is uh, sashimi grade, right? Correct. And which is interesting because I think as a farm, when you look at trout you know, traditionally, you're dealing with a. Uh, lakes and streams and Rocky Mountain. Yeah, you don't necessarily want to eat that sashimi style because you well, never yeah, know what I the bear question. is doing. What does doing. it mean, Greg? What, is well, that, what does got, that mean? You might have Tell a. Me. Well, Tell you can eat it. You can eat, yeah. eat a raw and the bacteria in there. Uh, when you have this fresh fish that's maybe a trout or something that's a, a stream or, or, or a lake fish, that you, you have some animals that might be upstream that will uh, taint that water well, that they're ingesting. But uh, this delicious uh, uh, farm trout in Colorado, a- am I on the right tr- track? 100%. And that's something that I definitely learned from Kermit uh, when he came up. And uh, I know he's going to talk about it a little bit more. but I mean, he It's own- a controlled environment. A controlled environment, 100%. So he owns... I think it's a 26-acre lake, and you might correct me on that later on, but um, that's how he controls it. And you know it's going in and out. <laughs> exactly, and that's how we know it's a fresh product. I mean, he brought these to me um, from his farm whole in rigor. I mean, he was like, these are alive at 3 o'clock in the morning, and here they are. At, you, you know, and this is later on in the day today, but it was 8 o'clock uh, in the morning when he brought them to me. They were only maybe dead five hours at that. Chris, were they cleaned, or were, did you clean them? Or we, we did. We definitely cleaned them. So they were uh, in the round when we got them, and um, then we flayed them down. Uh, Ryan and I today. What did kind you of save everything? Or sorry, Greg. No, I'm, just I'm what just, kind of trout did you get? I'm geeking on this. <laughs> 
Absolutely. So, I mean, we use the we use the bones for stock, and then, of course, like I was telling you before, we can scrape out off the bones for the rea that we talked about for the dish in front of you here, and then we use it for um, fillets. Now, we were trying it that way, and actually on the special tonight, we have a full um, uh, trout stuffed with lobster and scallops, and then, you know, for two. This is on this menu tonight? Tonight. Well... Oh. At the restaurant. Oh, okay. So if okay. you're listening at the restaurant right now. I know, now, yes, yeah. yes. We, the, here's where it starts. And <laughs> or oh downtown gosh, and on your way saying. right now. This dish right here is uh, perfectly delectable. Uh, the accoutrements that you have on here, uh, sourcing, you use a, a lot of your own products, or what do you do for microgreens? These microgreens are from Mountain Man Micro Farm. Um, he brings us trays that we have in the window. I was telling you about at the restaurant so people can see them. This is a mixture of micro um, kale, mustards, and chervil. And I made a little bit of a mess there. but um, And then what we have here is um, watermelon radish, apple, and then we have it with some uh, appellate vinegar as well as some hemp oil. And so that's kind of the vinegar with a little bit of lemon olive oil, and that was given to us tonight by uh, Altamira, which is one of our specialty producers. I need a testimony. Yeah, um, Chris, I want to go yeah. off on a tangent with you real quick while sure. he's getting a testimony of flavor here. You, you mentioned the hemp. A lo- uh, something new on the on the horizon right now. I see a lot of chefs doing um, is the infusion of CBDs. Yes. Where do you stand on that? Um, I don't think it's been tested 100. percent Although I'm working with some products that uh, I'm going to try in cocktails as well as um, you know maybe even in sauces and things like that. I think it could be a thing. Um, I, I guess without trying it 100% in into a cocktail, I feel like it could be like a low ABV cocktail type of thing that um, could be good if you don't want to consume alcohol, if maybe you want the feeling still, but you don't want to consume alcohol. So I think it could be a thing. I have not done a, a ton of work on it, but I'm definitely interested in it. It's, it's an interesting it's concept of, as we talk about the health through food, and, you know, and we... I mean, just the fact if you're eating good food, that should be the first step to your health. And I wonder where, you know, because we fa- we, we're, I think, understanding the effects of hemp and the benefits of hemp mm-hmm. way differently right now. And, you know, it's sort of like computer science. It's at an exponential pace. Yes. W- what, we're, what we're learning about the cannabinoids and how we, our body produces them. And to put them in food almost seems... To be natural, but I'm I'm interested to see what we're on. I, I was curious about well, your opinion on. I that. mean, with the hemp oil and the hemp seed, I mean, those are definitely like the hemp oil has bring this earthy flavor to it. Now, that's definitely something that's grown here in Colorado, which is also why we use it. So I kind of like to bring that together. Now, the the actual hemp seeds is one of those things that's actually a good protein. So we have something at the restaurant that's actually called a cauliflower steak. Um, it's a grilled cauliflower with accoutrement. What helps add protein to it is the crispy quinoa as well as the hemp seed. Um, and that's a composed vegetarian, actually vegan dish that you can get at the restaurant. So again, talking about that spectrum that we can do, that's why I brought it in because I thought, how can I p- pack as much protein into a vegan dish? And still make it awesome for people and that they can leave there going, hey, this is great. Because most of the time a chef's answer to a vegan or a vegetarian is, yeah, you can have the side of steamed veg I already got on the menu and then move on, right? Um, that's, not our, that's not our thought process. We want everyone to come in. And even though, yes, we are known for beef and fish and those types of proteins, the alternative proteins is definitely where we're excited, which is where mushrooms and the hemp seed and things like that come in. Right on, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, Let's thank you. do a little taste testing. These are our boys uh, from... Uh, I love this introduction. Do you, do you have a nickname for him yet? No, yes, I do. They, okay. These are the host of uh, Beer Craft yeah. right yes. here. And Andrew Moore <laughs> yeah. and Jeff Tyler. These guys are beer guys, but definitely love food. Yeah, so, Andrew, you brought a little bit of food over with you. We're going to taste this here real quick, get you guys a reaction of this dish, yeah. and I encourage you. This is my portion. I don't to, know where you guys well, No, I know. You guys. I'll just uh, maybe drink out of the bowl here. Chef Chris put it in front of me. It's, I think that's mine. <laughs> I got two plates. I touched it first. <laughs> Chef right. Starkus, what are we going to eat next in the uh, next segment here? With uh, Are we going to finish off some fish on this grill behind me? Yes, we're going to have Ooh. some grilled trout with some pear butter. And uh, roasted Romanesco and uh, roasted butternut squash. All right, here's Chef, the boys. What are, we work- what are we eating right here? You guys are eating uh, trout crudo with uh, Granny Smith and Fuji apples with a apple and lemon vinaigrette topped with some hemp seed and hemp oil. Oh, my God. And there's two different versions as well. You have this one that has a little bit more dill on it as well. So, you guys, wow. which sushi restaurant are you at? 
This right? Is Are like you at the sushi restaurant called the Urban Farmer? <laughs> no. Is that, is that Sashimi sushi? trout. I mean, this reminds wrap your mind around that. Wednesday really show, there was just several minutes of eating into the microphone. Yeah, we stopped talking and we just <laughs> ate. That's what I feel like is happening right now. I love, how, I love how kind of that tartness and crispness from the apples just help kind of work with that, that softer texture from the fish. I love the texture combo with these two things right oh, here. Thank you. That's great. I almost prefer to eat fish raw these days. I want to taste the freshness yeah. of yeah. the fish. Um, but, Brian, as we reach behind us off of this uh, great Proud Souls Grill <laughs> and taste this fish, it, yeah, it's so delicious. So we got the wrong side of the table. Yeah, oh, you guys have the fish over there. <laughs> there. Oh, it's a, that's fish? That fish is so delicious. All right, let's pass this out for the folks at Studio Kitchen Colorado. Uh, Jeff and Andrew from um, Beer Craft, they'll be on with us in booze and news, all the booze news you can use. But right now, we're going to take a turnaround. We're going to introduce the man that provided this fish from Frontier Fish Ranch here locally in uh, Colorado. Chef Chris Sarkis, he's jumping off to get the, the next dish ready. And these guys are right here with us, Andrew Moore and Jeff Tyler, uh, Spice Trading and Trepid Sojourner Beer Project. All's well in the world as we broadcast from you from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Now we're going to jump to Rich Snyder right over there in the, I almost call it the sponsorship corner. Thank you, Greg. Man, a cre a cr Chef Chris made like Trout Mountain over there. Holy cow, that thing was big. On this segment, you know, on this, on this break, I want to talk a little bit about innovation. A little bit about innovation. And when I think of innovation, Growers Organics, one of our original, our OG sponsors, Brian Freeman, I want to bring him over here and talk a little bit about innovation. And this guy has walked the walk. He was carrying organic produce. He invented produce, according to Greg and, and Brian. But, you know, you've, you've been innovative. You've taken chances. You've taken risks. And they're, they're, it looks like they're paying off for you, brother, in a great way. Well, you know, I love it, and I wouldn't do anything different, Rich. And thank you for, you know, really honoring that because it's a big deal. We were doing organic produce when people said it was a fad. You know, when people didn't even understand what organic kale was. No, you've done a, a fantastic job. You're relevant. You're, you and your business matter. So right now, we're going to uh, take off, take off iHeart. We're going to stay on Facebook for another minute. Thank you, my brother. We're going to dig you. a little deeper. We're going we're gonna to stay here on Facebook. Brian, when we talk about innovation, there's something I want to share with you that's pretty exciting that's coming up. Cherry Creek Innovation Campus. They're doing a whole school over there. And they're getting ready to have it in Cherry Creek. They're going to be teaching uh, kind of like Pro Start Plus, taking it to that next level to help more chefs uh, and better chefs come into our industry, which, as you know, is very, very needed. That is really cool, Rich. And who is doing that again? It's, it's part of the Cherry Creek School District. They've actually invited me to be on their advisory board to help them get the, uh, you know, make sure that it's a relevant curriculum. We're going to see some exciting things out of wow, that. Wow, that sounds really I think cool. we're going to take, I'm getting signals from Jay. We're going to take a break. We're going to pay a couple bills. We will be coming right back at you. Don't forget, Growers Organics. out on Instagram and Facebook for all the fun. Are we are we still on? Are, okay, oh, I, I thought we only had a minute. Oh, I've got a minute now. Well, God, we we got plenty to talk about. So yeah, what's what's hot right now? What are you seeing? What trends are you seeing in the produce situation? Well, carrying? you know, I was going to bring this up earlier. It's really about regenerative. I think that that old term of sustainable rich is played out. I think a lot of people are trying to jump on the bandwagon. First, it was natural, right? Everyone wanted to say, oh, we're natural. But the reality is, is so is wood, it's so is so carpet. Big. It's very big. Everything is. And now sustainable. What is really sustainable and are you giving it back? So there's this new concept that I'm talking about and some other farmers are talking about. Is it regenerative? Are we giving regenerative life back to the planet? New stuff, folks. Brian's always giving. He's giving, giving, giving. That's why he's uh, the found, one of the foundational parts here. We're going to uh, take a break. We'll be back. Growers Organic and a host on the Modern Eater Talk Show. Growers Organic is a Colorado sourcing company who provides Colorado's greatest chefs with the best organic produce. I've been partnering. Can you guys just confirm the live? That's 20 years, and our returning customers know they can count on us over and over again. Chefs who receive the highest rating on Good Food 100 choose Growers Organic. Greg, are you there? 
produce needs because we're experts at bridging the gap between the farm and the table. Join us in the organic revolution and go organic. Hello. Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Did I miss a live? Nope, 120 from right now. Okay. an aquaponics farmer, I get the importance of conserving our limited water supply. Did you know Colorado is suffering from the most severe drought since 2012? Water shortages are very rare, especially to Colorado most. farmers. Now here's the good news. Aquaponic farming uses 90% less water than traditional farming. You just cut out. Four and a half times more food per square foot. Using traditional farming techniques, farmers would flood their fields with large quantities of water. Greg, are you still there? water underutilized and just plain wasted but because aquaponics is a recirculating system yeah homie i am what okay okay all right sorry Pepper scared me for a second aquaponics has been running a 55,000 gallon system year round for four years and we use less than 500 gallons of water per day education is very important to us here at south river aquaponics i invite you to learn more about aquaponics at southriveraquaponics.com south river aquaponics the future of farming Want to bake the best 30. with the best. Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas and the Modern Eater. Our wraps fold cold and don't break open, yet they're soft and delicious. What's my secret? Ardent Mills. Organic, ancient, and heirloom beans like quinoa, spelt, and more. Locally headquartered in Denver, Colorado, Ardent Mills provides the industry's broadest range of traditional and organic flours, whole grains, customized blends, and specialty products dedicated to providing the culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients. Throw a headset on Jay so you can you get... Will. uh Bake the best you Go to the live right here. You're up. All right. Dot com. All right, here we go back to Studio Kitchen Colorado and Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. What a great week we had last night, with, or last week, with Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Back to business. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. What is A-Plus Beverage Solutions? Well, they install the best tap systems around. They make sure that the way the craft brewers intend their beer to taste, it comes right out of the spigot that way. And Jeff Rourke at A-Plus Beverage Solutions, not only is he going to do an install, he's going to make sure he does maintenance for you. I'm telling you what, your glycol system can be off, your temperatures can be off. You could be pouring inefficient beer. If you're Pouring inefficient beer. What are you doing, boys? You're pouring, You're pouring your, your money, money down, down the, the drain. drain. Uh, why pour your money down the drain? Uh, Jay, you pour, <laughs> you pour I, beer every single night. That's right. And without saying where that I pour it at, I pour foam. I pour foam. And that's all I think about is dollars and cents. And when you listen to Jeff Rourke explain to you how much dollars and cents is translated into foam when he was putting together your tap system, you would never, ever pour foam again. You would spend the money on preventative maintenance using Jeff Rourke, or you'd spend the money at Jeff Rourke putting in your system right the first time. What's the phone number? 720-272-3809. That's 720-272-3809. No looking at the notes. <laughs> no looking at the notes. You can't do any better. Uh, many people trust Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Get a hold of him. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke and... A plus beverage solutions. Whose cuisine is supreme? You're listening to the Modern Eater Show, the ultimate gourmet challenge. And it's time for In the Kitchen. You better believe it, In the Kitchen, because we truly are from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, live on this snowy Saturday evening. We love that you're joining us right now, and we're learning about all the good stuff in life. Good food, good products, good people, good services, and that's what the Modern Eater Show is all about. Hyper Local and Kermit Krantz from uh, Frontier Trout Ranch is here with us right now. <laughs> man, Kermit, <laughs> I love you, man. Welcome to the Modern Eater Thank Show. Thank you for having me, guys. I you really appreciate it. Look at this chef to your left. Yeah, I know. This is awesome. This is why farmers go to work every morning to make a product and then have this guy turn it into what he's just seen, oh, my God, my heart's gone. Yeah, rewind. What is that, truly, what does that mean? Here you are. You're humping it out every single day. You're like, I'd like to get, I've got a good product. I'm a good person. I've got a good service that I can provide people. I want to get in front of the people that matter. And here you are. You have Chris Starkis, who's uh, highlighting and featuring your trout from your ranch right here Saturday night on the Modern Eater Show. Um, that's got to be big. It is big. It's real big for our small company. We started uh, about uh, five years ago from scratch. Uh, our water comes from a deep artesian well, so we know exactly what our fish are swimming in. We hatch about 70,000 eggs a month. We take them strictly from egg to table or farm to fork. 
And when you find people like Chef Starkus here at the Urban Farmer doing what he does with our product, it just makes us get up that quicker every day. You know what's crazy, <laughs> Kermit? I've actually tasted the eggs. One of uh, one of the chefs that's, that I would, this is like, I, I refer to Chris with with such honor in this title because it's truly, I've only called one or two other chefs this, which is the next level. And this was a guy who introduced me Men to and your fish. Hall? Yeah, and, and was taking the eggs out, Chris. <laughs> and he was making, so, I mean, he was. He wouldn't let fish skin go by him. No, 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 no. no. He, he won't that's waste. What, like all of his, his close friends. He, because he couldn't put it on the menu because you can't get enough of the skin. Because yeah. once you taste your skin, and I don't know if you ever got the privilege of tasting your skins on. <laughs> on uh, you have you know, I don't know how to go skin. there with that. Yeah, have you tasted your- <laughs> <laughs> I suck my thumb a lot. but <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But I, Kermit, great job. Because whatever Thank you're you. doing down there, the feed must be good. The, I mean, and that's a yeah. level we haven't even gone into and started talking about because we're talking about the water first. Yeah, and the water is key. It comes from a deep artesian well. It's 550 feet deep. It comes out year-round at 59 degrees. We monitor the water with electronic monitors to know what's in it 24-7 so we know exactly what our fish have been swimming in. And we take that water. We, we do a, what we call a flow-through system. It comes out of the well, goes through the hatchery, goes through the juvenile sections, and then goes into the large adult ponds. All our juveniles are raised in concrete raceways and vinyl, so we can control their growth and disease control. And then we put the adults in large earthen ponds. We find that they have less finning or bruises on their fins. They get more color. They're living in an environment they want to live in. And then that's where the feed comes in. We feed them a high-protein fish food, and then as the season allows us, which we're coming into now, we start raising a product called stream shrimp, which is a very microscopic shrimp, snails, salamanders, and crawdads, and that will change the color of the natural fish, which is typically a white flesh to a little bit darker pink, and then in the goes back to white. We allow it to stand on its own. We add no dye to our fish, no hormones, no antibiotics. If we have disease, we use salt. Salt's the best thing for taking care of salmon or trout. See, really? That's, that's why it was an easy decision. At least for us, is that he he knows so much data about his his product and what he's doing and why he's putting it in there. You know, like it's it's easy to see in the trout that he's doing all this. You know, and, cool. and that full circle of where the water's coming from. I guess you know most people would listen to this much about wine that they're drinking, yeah. but not necessarily the food that You're they're so drinking. Right. And I and I. That's the change that needs to happen because everything he's saying is very important, you know, so I'm blown away. And we're a very sustainable company. We harvest only fresh fish. We harvest them at 3 in the morning. We drive them to Denver and deliver them to our distributor. They're still partially flipping about 8 o'clock. They quickly clean and process them. Like chefs like Chris, he may want them in the round. That's a very unusual thing. Most people have always wanted a processed product. But what I'm finding, people like it in the round because they get the egg row, they get the bones, they get all other types of things, the skin to do more things. Kermit, you stick around. I want you in the next hour, and we're going to do some things, but the second hour loosens up. We're going to do hour number two coming up next on the Modern Eater Show. Thank you. Did you know the IRS is getting... We good to go, Jay? We ready to jump in? We going from the sidelines? Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Brian. We're going to talk just a little bit about, a little deeper about being hyper-local. And when you want to find out who really is hyper-local, I'm going to, I'm going to share this in the next minute, actually the next several minutes. These are the people, like we were saying earlier, they've put their money where their mouth is. They want to be there. They are hyper-local. They're defining hyper-local basically with every pound of product that they make, every loaf, every pound of oil. Let, let's talk about some of these. Greg, and you're over here. This, this is going to be a fun segment. Um, where do we start? You know, Look at this. We talk about curating. I, I know. You know what, though? I'm, I'm going to send this away for a commercial break, and we're going to reward, we're going to reward the Facebook viewers with a little bit of in-depth information. This is an intimidating page. corner, Rich. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you're keeping this corner going very well. But over there on the show, that's a whole different thing. We're talking about the show, but right here, we're talking about the important stuff that keeps us going as a brand. What do we do, Little Rich, when we talk about 
curating the fine sponsors. How does that work? Well, we're selecting the best of the best. We're, we're getting the best on the bus first. On the bus first. And they're going to be great examples for everybody. Should we go pay a couple bills? I think we got six minutes. Well, we're going to, but our, oh, so we've got six minutes to go. I thought we were supposed to break. Oh, well then, oh, this is a no-brainer. Is it only, we only have six minutes? Let's start at the top. Girls Organic, we just had Brian on there. Talk about, talk about a business being relevant and being matter. There, a, a, a matter. If there's things that you can't get, I mean, so, sometimes he's the only guy you can get them from. Growers Organic, when we talk about Brian, he's the guy that invented produce. He's the guy who sends us down the path every day of what is your, where is your food coming from. I understand he's a good driver, too, on the, on the street. That's also the broccoli, you know, so we're trying to figure it out. That little rich, he never shuts up. He's always talking. But then you get Wait, please. Wait. Uh, Can it be? Can it be? Come here. Well, no, well, like, it, we come here. That. I asked him to. I had no idea he would. Come here, come here. We're actually come live. Right come on, now. we're live right now. Come on around. It's like it's hard to get 45 seconds. And so we're like, oh, they're you know, Yeah, it's like, you're in there. You got to give it to okay. right now. Keegan, all right, Keegan Gerhardt. I said, hey, listen, it's snowing out right now. Did you know that? Can you show some B-roll of the three inches of snow? Yeah, I measured it. Guess how I measured it. Keegan, uh, here we are, right here at Studio Kitchen, Colorado. You haven't been here. I haven't been here. Did you steal this place so they know you're in here? Yeah, they don't know where it seems suspicious. This is good stuff right now because... Uh, Restaurant week, if you don't know, D Bar Denver, you're in the mix this of it. Right? This, I mean, this was our biggest night last year. So, with the snow, it I think it's going to be a little bit softened, but we've had a great restaurant week. Really good. Came out really amazing. Over, uh, over 2,000 first time diners at D Bar. 2,000? 2,000 opportunities to have some. Yeah, that was surprised. Well, tell me a secret. Yeah. Tell me a secret. <laughs> you have some things coming up. Dang it. Oh, I like those. Stop. Seriously. Uh, I, 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 I hope not that. Yeah. 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 People would appreciate this right now. Uh, I judge the new show, but it's going to be on that two weeks. Which is what? No. Uh, Buddy vs. Dad. The bigger so one. Three more words, six episodes. It's the Cake Boss vs. Daisy Cakes. And uh, Sherry Art and I. You judge. ready to do some radio? Sure. Right. Okay. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's go do oh, some radio. Do some radio. Minute. You're going to. Hi, Jay. I told you Jay would be happy that you're here. Here's the deal Keegan Gerhardt, right now. You know who Keegan is. The Food Network, D Bar Denver. He's got special projects coming. I saw your laptop. Yeah, that's true. You do. I yeah, did see a laptop. Last year, There's a project. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just yeah. Just Ponies and Unicorns. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was not. Um, one yeah, of the really best awesome. advocates of this Colorado culinary scene, like Keegan like Gerhardt. Let's go over here to the show. We're going live right now sure, on iHeart Radio. Let's play some radio. Back on over. Do this, man. Okay, I'll finish up. We'll, we'll keep. I'll, I'll keep going over our list here till you guys get uh, saddled up. We got saddled up. We got a couple minutes. So we were talking about Rockalitas. We try to do everything very, very hyper local, from the wheat to the shortening to to everything in there. If you want to be hyper local? Ours is the brand to use. Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. Holy cow! They're employing over 120 family farms here in Colorado alone. The oil goes to people that fry chips like me. The the crushed seed actually goes to feed. Uh, a sheep, we had some lamb in here that was unbelievable about three weeks ago. And actually, uh, in fact, I'm going to ask the, Greg, the Greg, Greg, do we have Zach boning in at 7 o'clock? Yeah. So Zach, Zach will be, Zach from Colorado Mills will be phoning in. We'll have him on the show. He's calling in from Michigan where they're having the uh, American Culinary Federation certified master chefs certification so some of these guys are trying to become certified master chefs we're going to get the latest on that when he phones in another brand the goods restaurant uh, mark whistler he was on channel nine this morning incredible supporter of everything colorado great chef great heart the guy's food is incredible ardent mills our newest sponsor i have a special place in my heart for ardent mills 
They support Colorado farms. They pay them premiums. They help uh, Colorado State University with grants to help uh, create different varieties of wheat that grow under our challenging conditions. Conditions. Don't confuse it with GMOs. It is non-GMO. But the, the commitment that they've made to Colorado, the commitment they've made to bakers and food manufacturers, is incredible. I've seen it firsthand. We will be doing a remote from their test. Uh, they've got a test facility here and a, a kitchen that is like second to none. Yeah. High quality people, you're going to be hearing way more about Arden Mills here. We're glad to tell that story. Crush Pizza and Tap, Jason McGovern. Oh my gosh, he was in here uh, making some pizzas a few weeks ago. He is incredible. We'll be uh, back here in just a little bit. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. I'm out of my tweet. It's time for the second course, hour number two of the modern eater. What are you hungry for? Uh, this Here's is to a meal oh, yeah, we're all this here for. Uh, Delicious, very well. tasty. Now we're getting to the good stuff. With your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, You're Parker, and Brian Freeman. You better believe it right now, huh? This is the way it's the plot takes a twist. <laughs> the plot takes a twist. And as we're snowed in the studio kitchen, Colorado, Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, Little Rich Snyder, and uh, Dave Avery on the uh, on the board tonight. What? I love it. Chris, but Chris, Chris is on the cocktails. And then we've got somebody who came in for dessert. Exactly. Well, this guy, does this guy know dessert? Does, does, uh, who wants to introduce him? Does it? I mean, how do you – the two and only. His name is Chef Keegan Gerhard. Welcome back to the Modern Eater Show. Thank you, man. I think only in Denver. How would you get away from restaurant week? That's what I was asking myself. Final Saturday night of restaurant week, go out in the snow, drive into a suspicious-looking warehouse neighborhood, <laughs> walk in and have fresh trout and Matsutake whiskey cocktail with bee pollen and such. <laughs> Why not? Dang! You, you dudes know each other. Uh, Chris Sarkis from Urban Farmer continues. Uh, how do you guys know each other? Well, I should, I should say I know of him. When I was in Vegas, he was actually doing, um, I think it was for Food Network. He was doing a world pastry for him. Uh, one of our yep. uh, pastry chefs at the two-star mission place I was mentioning, Alex at the Wynn. Um, she I was, in, she was in it. Yeah. He's a good cyclist, too, Chef Alex. He is. Yeah. 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 And Jennifer Whitty was uh, was in the uh, World Pastry Forum. And Nothing stuff. good to say about Jennifer Whitty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. She's hilarious, yeah. actually. She's I'm awesome. te And Chef Preston Phillips from Grind comes in the door right now. Uh, 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 we're heating up. Second hour, always uh, grand. This is really cool. you got to get through the first turn, half turn before you can bail on a Saturday night, dude. You can't come early. <laughs> come on. Why would you come early to anything at all? Uh, Keegan, here it is. You're here in Studio Kitchen. First taste of what we do here. And Chris Stark is from Urban Farmer. Do we need to catch up on what we're doing? Or do you Listen, see I, I follow you guys, and I hate to bring up social media because I feel like it is the, uh, like Lady Gaga said, it is the, uh, the abysmal part of the Internet. But... Uh, but there's good. There's some good. There's some good and bad at social media. And I think what y'all are doing is good because I see you post from here. So I felt like you either stole the kitchen or got one. And you always, stole have, it. Like, stole it. You always have like 40 people in here. And I'm like, how, why, how did I miss all We're that? We're squatters. Yeah, that's really cool. This is, uh, this is what you needed. This is better than, you know, you don't want Modern Eater to be just a normal radio show, right? No. We this do. is this exactly is, what they needed. This is yeah, wicked. Exactly. Yeah, this is cool. Isn't it fun? All right, so as we're catching up, and Keegan, what I mean, what a treat. I it was texting Keegan. I always say, Keegan, show me what you're doing right now. Guy's everywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was on the ski slopes last week. He gave me a picture of, like, a helmet <laughs> behind some. It's, I mean, you could have obviously photoshopped, but you're. I, you, dude, I, I spent like, a, I spent like $150 on those stupid goggles with a fan so that my glasses wouldn't fog up. <laughs> today you were showing cocktails. You know, we it, we're trying to we – we take Denver Restaurant Week seriously, and we're trying to do – we try to go above and beyond. Not small versions of what we do, but what we really do plus new stuff. So a pre-dessert paired – whoa, paired with a pre-cocktail pre and, um, you know, coconut, passion fruit, almonds, stuff like that. And it's, uh, it's snowing and people are still coming, so I'm super grateful. Awesome. T-Bar is truly one of those places right now to where if you're going to go anywhere and, and and see and be seen, I go to D-Bar Denver, and I'm like, man, uh, you're curating a crowd of people that are truly uh, some of the best of Denver. How do you do that? <laughs> I didn't pay you to say that, but that's very nice of you. How do you do that? <laughs> I Listen, 
we try to make delicious food and have people tell other people. That's really the only secret. Although, I feel like when you were in there last. I should have been kicked out. I can't remember. Did you get arrested or did you get kicked out? I don't remember. That's <laughs> and I was here, I was going to say, oh, wait, are they coming for Keegan or are it they coming a, for his wife? It was a they, high school she, cheerleader buyout and he wouldn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I can't yes, remember. Yes, I. Uh, I'm going to assume, Keegan, you like good food and beverage. Uh, no, listen, that's Denver. Right? It, it, it's kind of gotten old now for people to say, no, Denver's a real food city. Denver's really a it's, – I it's, think it's way beyond that. I think there's a – there's a, like a really awesome camaraderie among the people that create the food for this community, and that is the part I like. I mean, I love that people come to my restaurant. Don't get me wrong. And I love that with twice as many restaurants in Restaurant Week – people still come but the coolest stuff is what you guys are doing it's the people that are behind the scenes making the food they're you're you bringing them in some here. honey hey listen i just asked if we could tap that thing and he was like yeah <laughs> we can do Look at that. Chef, like, I, i've got a question for you chef keegan yes, this sir. is go to go to compare boulder to denver Oof. and and you're you know it's i think it's interesting we've got two cities that are really good sort of Food hubs. I think, uh, yeah, listen, I, I don't know if I can speak to Boulder because when I really spent time there was so long ago, I went to half of college at CU Boulder and half in Ole Miss of all places, so we could, that could be a whole show. But, uh, <laughs> but Boulder, clearly, with, with, there's so many great places, and there's some of the best of the best there, like Frasca and Bobby and ev- everything that he touches, I think. But um, what I've noticed is that I think is interesting, and that kind of makes me smile because I like when people get really, really – possessive of what they do is I notice that when there's the best of Denver and the 5280 and the top of the town and the and all those sorts of even top chef and they talk about Denver then everybody gets all pissy about oh, why did Boulder get in there but well, that Boulder's not Denver this is Denver <laughs> you know so I kind of nice. like that 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 uh but I you know Boulder is always progressive in many ways um, and all that they do, they have a different perspective on it's things. It's the and People's Republic of Boulder. It is. They live in their <laughs> own world. I felt like I was in ca- ca- like California when I went there. That was in the 90s, and it was very California-ish. But I love Boulder. I, I think it's the coolest place to get to drive 20 minutes to go to. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of the things I love about Denver. You can, uh, you can get anywhere from here at an airport, and you can drive to some of the most beautiful places in the country in, in an hour. Mm-hmm. I, I love Denver. I love Colorado. So do you I, chefs keep an eye on each other? I wonder. And how do you do it? Social media? I mean, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, social media. And, of course, you know, some, some Denver chefs are on Top Chef and those shows. But I think that in general, That's true, we, right? you know, we definitely come up and through these things, through com- community events. You know, I yeah. think I saw you last time through uh, the Star Chefs event that was yeah, out absolutely here. Absolutely right. You know, so as we go to events, we're asked to do events not only here in the city, but also abroad, um, you know, throughout the nation. We, we cross paths. You what know? do you learn? I, do you learn what not to do? I, you know, I think I'm constantly looking for inspiration. You know, I think we all have pretty healthy egos, for better or for worse. And you so have your wife. She gives you enough my, inspiration. Oh, yeah. my, I'm... But, you know, you, I think we're all constantly, I think we're, uh, maybe we're not all. I don't want to speak for everyone, but I find myself constantly on a search for the newest, next, best, greatest thing. And I hear yeah. something about somebody, I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to do it better than me, and I want to see. And then you end up, even if you don't think it's better, you see it, and you think, wow, I could do that a different way. It might be better. And I think that kind of healthy competition uh, builds the industry. You know, I think that's, uh, I think, uh I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm not fond of the people that say, how many, what, what are you going to do new with broccolini? No one can do, everything's been done with sure. this ingredients. That's, that's BS. Well, I got a question for both of you. Is, is there an unspoken justice that you won't go to someone in the 20 your peers and say, you might have, you might have taken a wrong turn there? Do you, do you ever do you ever do you ever go there That's because I'm dirty, mean, I, Brian? I, I don't well, know. but I don't think you well, do. Do you mean? Dude. Yeah. That, hey, you, well, you mean like on a di- like if I'm in the restaurant, I'm trying a dish. I'm like, oh, that's not like great. Or, or I mean, or it could in be their there, life. or exactly, it's or like, it's like you get together with somebody, and I know this because in my world, we joke in the in the produce world we, because we're dealing with farmers and then distributors and and a lot of people in between there, um, and and sometimes someone will come up with something new. I'll tell you, 20 years ago, we used to joke about broccoli knuckles. That someday <laughs> okay, someone was going to market broccoli knuckles. Yeah. And it was the joke with all the produce guys of like, we are taking every little thing 
But guess what? Today, folks, yeah. broccoli coleslaw is broccoli knuckles. It is, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And so, it's, and that's where I go, do, you know, do you I, ever give someone kudos for, like, right on? You just did something that absolutely. no one else is doing, and great job. But also, sometimes, oh, man, did you take a turn? I, I, absolutely. I think you can do both ways because I think it just depends, you know, what is good for your restaurant. You know, if you're running, like, a vegan vegetarian restaurant, those knuckles might be awesome for your menu and it works for you. If I try to do something like that at the restaurant, people might be like, what are you doing? You know, you're just trying to be cutting edge to be cutting edge, you know? So, yeah, I think so. I mean, if I, it, my true friends, absolutely, I would say something to them. Yeah, Keegan, do you, care, do you care friends. anymore? I do care. Do you care about criticism? Are Feedback? you allowed to drop the F-bomb on my hair radio? Well, you just said that. <laughs> so no. That's yeah. not it. Uh, do you, I mean, uh, truly, uh, do you come in a point in time in your life to where it's like, I, I have a lot of F-bombs to give. <laughs> do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a break. <laughs> let's, let's take a break with Keegan. I, I just truly, when do you come to a point, and I, uh, uh, at the beginning of the show when uh, Chris Stark is, I set him up, I said, I think he's insane in a good way. He's somebody that actually cares about the important things that I care about. That's sourcing, sustainability, putting a good product in front of people, and actually putting your mouth, putting putting it where your mouth is. Your, his micro farm, putting, uh, making sure. His honey. There's yeah. He 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 does all of these things to where. If you put yourself out there like that, uh, are you cutting new road or are you putting yourself out on an island? And I think chefs, do you want to play it safe? Keegan, you've never been safe, have you? I hope not. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think there's, gosh, when you get into this kind of, you like this kind of talk. I know that you I do. do. <laughs> and, uh, and I do too, but it, there's so many things that end up sending, sounding kind of cliche. But I don't think that you, you get anywhere near greatness with a half-assed effort. I don't think so. I don't yeah, think absolutely. you can be halfway in. I don't think you can say, I care on the weekdays, but the weekends are mine. That, that's not how restaurants work. You know, you, you, that's not how cuisine works. How do you fly your flag with that, though, and still get somebody that Chris would say wants to come in and just wants to eat a steak and just shut up? Don't. You know, it's a good stay. Uh, you, you dose it out here and there. Like I said, you, you, you have to read the tables that you have yeah. and, the, and the guests that you have. Because like you said, if, a get, if they don't care about that, they're coming just to be your guests, then great. But what I was going to say a little bit before that was the elite, the best normally, are the most eccentric. Okay? In, in, in all of the fields. I remember there was a guy in Vegas, and he was an oyster guy in Canada. <laughs> and his oysters were the best. But tracking him down and asking him for something extra sometimes or, you know, he, it would be like Canada Thanksgiving. He wouldn't even tell you that they were closed. And here I am thinking I'm getting a shipment. And I, <laughs> for the longest time, I was like, man, I don't want to use this guy anymore. But the hands down, they were the best oysters that we could get. And so you dealt with it, you know, and he was eccentric in that way. And, and so because of that, we could tell his story. And so I think that, that goes for chefs. That goes for all sons. Those The eccentrics um, are generally at the elite level because they're thinking about those things. Two of the well, most... I listen, I'm not going to put myself at that, in that category. However, I will say this. I, you know, you and I have a good relationship. You, I, and Jay have a great relationship, I think. And you ask me all the time this and that. And I can't even pay attention. But when you ask me, like, about an ingredient, I'm like, oh, yeah, here's what I'm doing right yeah. now. Oh, you want to talk about food? Here's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about something in the future that may or may not happen? <laughs> I can't, like, it's like, what? So, no, I'm not good at answering my email. I'm not good at answering texts that... I'm really good if you come to my restaurant and you want to talk about food or beverage. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm with you all day, all day, all night long. You showed me a picture of a <laughs> delicious drink that it was like a hybrid of uh, libation and dessert. Uh, I, and I think I'm going to throw that up on our Facebook page during this break. But when you, when you look at innovative, being innovative in this industry, it's like, do you want to do it or do you want to do it sells? Do you want to cut new road or do you want to be safe? These are the types of things that when I look at Chris Starkis from Urban Farmer and Chef Keegan Gerhardt from D-Bar Denver is they don't want to be safe. They don't care. Well, listen, it's... I'm is not, that right? I'm you not don't being, care? I'm not, I, I care about what I think people want. You, you know, have a good palate. It's super subjective. I mean, how risky are we being when we're... What did 5280 call us? Upscale American comfort food? So American comfort food's not real risky, you know, but... <laughs> Uh, but to do a pre-dessert with, with, you know, pandan and, and uh, organic pineapple and organic coconut and make it vegan and make it gluten-free and have it still be delicious, Keegan, that takes some effort. Your desserts have gotten me laid. 
Sweet. <laughs> well, that was not my goal. <laughs> they have. And Urban Farmer, your food man, if you want to get if you want to get a one up on anything else in town, these guys are the guys that are going to do it. Man, uh, you've taught me a thing or two. A thing or two. Oh, well, but I want to go back to Chef Keegan because uh, let's there's some throw he said it to some Richie stuff. and we'll okay. come back. We're going to we'll come keep back this after going. the break, folks. Uh, Zach Kreider from uh, Colorado Mill Sunflower Oil, man. I uh, sorry so, so much, but we did not you anticipate. Have. Keegan uh, Gerhardt. But little Rich Snyder in the Thanks, corner with Greg. Andrew I mean, Moore. what a powerful segment. When you've got Keegan and Chef Chris together, holy cow, I was like, keep going, keep going. Uh, we're going to carry on this innovation talk. I've got Andrew Moore here, probably the most innovative brewer, in, I'm going to say in the state. It's, it's pretty easy <laughs> well, to go. Thank you. Let's do a little bit of high altitude flying over what it is. What, what is the innovative process for you? Um, well, it's sort of three things. I mean, it starts with a lot of it's like history of beer. Like, what were they doing with beer previously? Some of it is like culinary inspired. We're looking at a lot of ways that people are using these ingredients in other food items. And then a lot of it is like cultural. I mean, I want to put people in a mindset of a place, right? So what are the flavors and spices from that place that kind of summarize that area um, as a whole? Now, how many different beers do you have? Um, so we, I mean, we keep about 12 to 14 beers on tap all the time, but we've probably brewed over 100 unique beers in the almost two years that we've been open. Yeah, and I, and I think unique is probably a little understated on that, but we're going to dive in a little deeper in just a minute. Uh, for you listeners, you're listening to the, uh, and watching the Modern Eater Show. We're going to break for a few commercials, but we're going to stay live on Facebook. Take it away, Jay. Okay, we're staying here with you, Andrew. We're not right. going anywhere. We're going to go even deeper. I, ask, I want to ask you a little bit about the process. Do you sure. find a flavor that, and, and it's like, I've got to put that in a beer, or is it an idea, the, the end game, and then you work your way there? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, the short answer is yes, <laughs> right? It goes in both directions. Like, uh, increasingly, it's, you know, there's a flavor that we want to experiment with in beer, like mushrooms, right? Hey, uh, I want to explore, like, what? You're listening, to, you're, you're listening to the Modern Eater Show. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. The number one. So uh, we want to do a stout, or we want to come into an Irish beer, and then what kind of flavors can we add to that that will kind of uh, accentuate the Irishness uh, of that beer? Incredible beers. Hey, Jared, well, can you hear me? The segment coming up at 745 is going to be a great one. Uh, Jared, can you hear me? Jared. Belgian style beers is waiting for you. Brews is in high gear this winter with some serious badassery coming down the pipe. The infamous Hellraiser is on tap, along with Atlas Quadruple, Talus and Trident Triples, and our unique champagne beer, Brut Le Grand. We're celebrating Stout Month with our Belgian style Onyx, Toasted Oat, and Belgian Chocolate Stouts. And coming soon, Double Dog Dare Imperial IPA, Hibiscus Saison, Whiskey Sour Double, and a limited bottle edition of our Brett Saison. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, Check out all our beers on our website, along with daily... Hello, hello, yes, hello, hello. Yes, 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 Okay, yes, hey, yes. Do, are we ready for Zach right now? Sure. Okay, I'm going to tell him right now. 1675 West 67th Avenue in Denver, where your dog is always welcome. Join us soon for some Belgian-style badassery. Rocker Spirits. One minute. Hillary. It's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey, rocker rum, rocker vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. Com. Hey, it's Chef Elon Wenzel, owner of Element Knife Company. If you cook, then you'll know the importance of a quality knife. Okay, we have Zach. We're coming back in 20. And expose me to exceptional cutlery. That's why I am so excited to offer you the knives I fell in love with. Element Knife Company is chef-driven, and my goal is to support and educate. Get at me for a knife clinic or conversation. Find me at elementknife.com or by simply calling 303 460 
For the best knives in your kitchen, think Element Knife Company. Justin Brunson, Old Major, you're listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. You better believe it, you're listening to The Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Greg Holland back, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman, and uh, we're continuing on from Studio Kitchen Colorado right now. And I think we have on the line uh, Zach Kreider from uh, Colorado Mill Sunflower Products. How are you, Zach? I'm good. I'm good. Greetings from uh, Detroit, Michigan tonight. Detroit, Detroit nice. Michigan. Whoa. Motor City Rock Town, wow. right? Uh, you know, Master Chefs it, it is, is going on right now. Uh, give us uh, 30 seconds on Master Chefs. What's happening? Yeah, uh, Master Chefs kicked off today. There's three competitors. I should say, I shouldn't call them competitors. They're all competing, I guess, against themselves. Um, but they're working towards the American Culinary Federation Master Chef certification. Uh, it's an eight day exam. Um, it's pretty intense. Uh, today was a five course meal that they had to prepare. Um, and these guys are. They, they have master chefs looking over their shoulder, uh, you know, for three, four hours, evaluating what they're doing in the kitchen, and then they take that meal and kick it off to six other master chefs for a taste test and uh, judging from there. And, um, Zach, are you a neat. judge? Pretty cool. Are you a judge, or are you just a, a participant and watching, a spectator? No, yeah, I'm just, I'm out here, our, our company, Colorado Mills, uh, is the founding sponsor to the Master Chef Order. Um, so we support this group of 70 uh, elite chefs. Um, there's only 70 of them in the United States, and uh, our group is a uh, sponsor to them. This is uh, our third year of sponsorship to support this group to help them grow. But I'm hanging out, out here with our, our favorite person, Joan Brewster. Uh, out here in Michigan, uh, we're just evaluating, you know, kind of the whole thing overall, you know, kind of how could we improve the, you know, sponsorship side of it. Um, it's got to be nice there, and warm you know, up there, Zach, right? <laughs> it, it's better than Probably warmer than right here. Now, I can tell you That's that much. <laughs> hey, Chef Keegan Gerhardt's yeah. with us here right now, as, uh, and uh, Spicy Dan from Savory Spice. Spicy Hi, guys. Dan. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Keegan, what was the hey, question? Guys. I thought there's already been 70 winners on Gordon Ramsay's Master Chef. Silence. Um, I don't know how many have been on there. I don't follow that, that Master Chef show. Me um, neither. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about real master chefs. I just felt like we should clarify. I know because there's only Actual. how many real master chefs in the world. Oh gosh, I don't know, but like Correct. you said, seventy, in, seventy Can't period be. in the country. That's come on. Yeah. So Colorado yeah, Mills, so amazing. Seventy. Yeah, there's seventy in the United States. Um, you know, last year there was like eight comp uh, eight people that took the exam and only a couple passed. Only uh, two or three, I don't recall, actually passed. So it's a grueling grueling exam and there's only 70 in the united states and wow. uh and and what and to clarify like the gordon ramsay stuff where we're really pushing with our sponsorship as well as some other sponsors um is to help trademark the Open the up, name chef. american master up, chef man. and help them grow their brand which helps the acf which just helps everybody I got to tell you what, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products does so it's much for amazing. the community is supporting the Master Chefs program. But beyond that, the uh, Colorado Chefs Association and things that we do here right, at the Modern cool. Eater Show in the Modern Eater Network that Chris Stark is here said to me Yummy. this week, it was interesting. It was like because of Brian it presented this to us that uh, we're now using Colorado Mills Sunflower Products at Urban Farmer. Nice. Yeah, cool. Chris, thank you. You know, Chris and Brian, thank you for that. Um, you know, and that's where we want to be as a company is get the, getting to know our end users, getting to know the chefs, you know, finding value in people that see value in what we're doing and we see value with what they're doing to the culinary community. I mean, thank you as well. I think at the, at the end of the day, it hands down like tasted crap. better, which is what what sold it too, you know. I mean, not only you guys local, but it, it tasted better on the product and, and what's going on to our guests, so you can't say no to that. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. You know, you're supporting 120 family farms, you know. So thank you. Well. Another instance of hyper-local and how we can do uh, what we can do to support other people to 
high tides raise all ships and uh, for well, Urban Farmer to... To use those. Yep, you heard me jump in there, Greg, because I <laughs> wanted to say what <laughs> Chef Keegan... And all I, the I boys across a from us, right yeah. <laughs> all the boys across from us, we're talking <laughs> about something so good. We're talking <laughs> about Colorado Mills and what an incredible product he has. But guess who? We have someone else here from Savory Spice. Spicy Dan. That Spicy yes, Dan is there over. Thanks, Chef guys. Keegan is over there tasting Spicy Dan. We're, talking, we're, we're tasting and, some yeah. amazing spice right Come here. Come on, man. This and Chef Keegan, you're talking. You're looking at the, the chicharron salt. Chicharron man. We, salt is like We've worked hard on that salt. It's yeah, it's got some beautiful pork dust. It's got a little bit of habanero on the backside. Some salt. A uh, little bit of garlic powder. Um, it's piggy goodness right there. That's pork what I'm saying right there. Piggy, that's piggy goodness. Look at these two pork chefs. They're dust. putting a little bit in their palm. Yep. <laughs> they're, they're throwing it up their <laughs> mouth. It you is. think we're in Colombia here. No, it's like a hotel room in Vegas where the spices are a lot different. <laughs> and a, little, a, little, a little spice Well, but right it goes here. back to we're talking about this awesome product with Colorado Mills and Zach. And then it ties right into because these guys are, you use the oil to cook with. You put the spice on it to give other flavors yeah. and to bring out a journey, right? We're taking, we are taking a trip, a culinary trip, every time we go to one of these folks' restaurants. You're a culinary yeah. trip. Listen, I, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you something about the dessert you know, part. People always, one of the most common questions is, how did you come up with that? How can you be so creative, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. I, and I don't, and I'm not, this is in no way false, whatever, or like being modest, but it's not appropriate. I, when there's ingredients like this around, it's pretty easy. And in Colorado, I think you're super spoiled. You know, you don't, you may not have the seasonality of, of say, a Southern California. Yeah. But I mean, like those spices right there, I could think of like 20 things to make just sure you could, <laughs> for that. Do stuff. you use them? Yeah. Oh yeah, savory yeah. spice, of course. You yeah. do. But, yeah. uh, interesting. And there's not, there's not like there's a competition. We're all sharing the love. Dan's here, like, man. we're all sharing see? the love. See, <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not competition for the best no. spice in Denver. Yeah. Savory, savory spice. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, we you work know, we work that. on the craft of it. You know, we love what we do. We really focus. You know, we love working with these chefs because they're the creative side. We like to be creative as well, and we're really, you know honed down on the flavors people are looking for. What's different? What's interesting? You know, Ryan was talking about using that Cherry Creek uh, seafood spice yeah. on one of the. Pieces of trout back there. Yep. You know, it's pretty simple, but when you come down to quality ingredients and, you know, quality production, that's what we do here. You know, I mean, that's just what it's all about. Spicy Dan, yep. as we uh, go into <laughs> talking about spices, it, it's one thing. You look at my spice app, you're like, I want to outfit this. Yeah, I want to help out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How? Do, where do you begin? Where do you begin Where when you look at a restaurateur like uh uh, Keegan Gerhardt, and, and you look at uh, yep. Chris Sarkis, and you yep. say, "Hey, listen, here, here's what I have to offer." And uh, it, it, what, what's the, what's the variable? Is it price? Well, I, the, the, obviously that's part of it. I mean, no, there's Keegan of it. shaking his head. No. Okay, well, that's what we like. That's always what we like to hear. <laughs> um, a lot of you know, look at the menu, see what these guys are doing. Anyway, you know, come to them with something that's approachable. Um, you know, bring bring a few things that they're already using, showing them something new, something different. And, um, you know, just start a conversation. You know, they know, they know what quality spices taste like, look like, um, you know, price-wise. And these guys, you know, they want the best. Um, they want to be able to find a product that they can create from or use with. I mean, we, we make our own creative blends. A lot of these guys are making their own blends in-house. So it's a matter of, like, bringing the, you know, bringing the quality. That's really what we focus on. So, and this know, is and, Dan and Hayward with Savory Spice. Yep. But go deeper into this, Dan, yep. because the reality is, is do all spice companies, you have a test kitchen. We do. Where you're, yep. you're not cooking food. You're just making spices. Well, Why do doing, you need a test both. kitchen? <laughs> are all spices created the same? Yeah. They are not. And it's a lot about freshness and, and, uh, and how they're treated in country of origin and, uh, and just the quality of, uh, quality of them. You know, How do you really give that 30-second pitch to where you're talking to a restaurateur, yep. to where you're talking to a chef, and you say, I got yep. 30 seconds. I want to tell you as we're going up the elevator, you're getting off on 12, and I want to give you my pitch. How I do know, you do it I right now? I know what it is. What is it? He doesn't say anything. He just opens up the <laughs> cheat your own salt. He's like, try that. <laughs> we just bring some of that. You know, that's on. it. We just lead in can with I, that. But it Keegan, is not, can I cut that out? <laughs> Give sure, that to Dan. Out. That yeah, was thank good. You. John Irvin There's, from Gluten Free Things. Yeah. He made a living off of your endorsement. <laughs> Endorsements are everything, and you hear well, that. I, and again, you know, it's about building relationships with people. You know, we know we have a quality product, and it's about you know coming to these guys and saying we want to work with you. Um, you know, and develop that you know that system where you know that you're going to get a quality product from us. 
Um, we'll work with you on pricing, obviously, but yeah. it's more a matter of you know the consistency of the of the of the quality and and why and how we grind it. We grind in small batches. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of relate it often to like the beer industry and people doing you know like really small batch cut types thing. That's what we do with our spices. Well, can I, uh, Chris Keegan? No, does, yeah, does I, local I mean anything to you? Of course. Uh, why? Because yeah, otherwise. What's the point, sort of? I mean, we're not. Com- I, I, I'm not successful as many chefs in Denver at being like a hundred percent local. You, you say yeah. hyper local a lot, but when I know the guy who made it, that's pretty awesome, you yeah. know. And uh, yeah. I can remember, for example, I can remember Alex when he first opened Fruition Farms. Yeah, and he would bring his some of his cheeses to us, like literally, like walking in there with like galoshes and sheep shit all <laughs> over him and. I'm like, dude, what are you doing right yeah. now? I mean, you know, they're like, this is actually like in the yeah. farm to table range, but you got to change your shoes. On, man, right? you got to do something. That means full something, farm though, doesn't right. it? Yeah, it does. It means something. Come on. I mean, yeah. I, I mean I, we talk about baking and cooking with love at D-Bar all the time. You know, that's not something you can quantify. That's not something you can prove. That's not something that's yeah. on a recipe. But there's people that execute a recipe like they're cutting the grass, and there's people that put their heart and soul into it and i believe that comes across on the plate okay and then the the common thread of all the people that are here tonight is again that service side which you know keegan and i that's all we do is we serve people all the time in our restaurants and everything and so it's nice to have someone come in and treat us how we want to be treated right and that's and that feels really good and then you know obviously supporting local and everything else with no carbon footprint you can go on that whole that whole side of things as well sure but that feels good and that's also why you want to work with these people as a service we talked about that in our staff meal today like you know Chef, we're making so many people happy. This the front of the house talk, and this has been such a great, exciting week, and whatever. And I, like, what would make you that happy? And I think they think mm-hmm. we want to be treated like that. That's not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Can somebody bring me something that's local, that's amazing, that's <laughs> yeah. new, yeah. that's Creative, flavor forward, that's, yeah, that exactly. will make every category happy? Like, yep. true innovation yep. in cuisine is difficult. But I think people that people, listen, we're going backwards in time. We're going back to the time when every village had. A baker. Yeah. Every village yeah, had yeah, yeah. Uh, a butcher. Finally, yeah. thank you. Yeah. We're going backwards. <laughs> yes. I mean, where would you get, do you get your steak somewhere else and from that butcher? No, yeah. of course you don't. Yeah. Right. It's just that the economies of scale are much larger in a city. But if you're in Denver and you don't realize that 90 percent of your menu can come within five, ten miles from you, yeah. you're not playing the game right. Well, hey, chefs, I've got a question. Jump into what Dan was talking about was cost. And, and one of the things that I, I feel like yep. always people are like, oh, it's too expensive, this or that. Yep. How is, Dan, you're putting angel fairy dust on your food. Yeah. Is, is really, if he charged you $50 for a little thing that you only are putting grains on, is that going to screw up your food costs that much? I always ask. I, I mean, I'm curious well, always yeah, because. Follow the money. I have never costed fennel pollen. Yeah. <laughs> However. Please don't. <laughs> However, you yeah. know, I mean, I, I think it's, I think that for me, I, I, I'm actually quite interested to hear your take on it, but yeah. spices fall into the same category as oil. You can use a lot of really crappy oil. You yep. can use a little bit of a very gr- good oil or great oil. Spices are even yeah. more so that way. That's usually where uh, I go with it. And yeah. I like whole spices. I like to, I like to roast. I like to warm them. I like yeah. to get the essential oils going. I like to let the spice become all it can be. Because yep. if you're taking something pre-ground that you used last year for that same holiday, <laughs> yeah. don't oh, it's not, not so fresh second, anymore? Not <laughs> so fresh anymore. <laughs> don't invite me. I mean, it's usually <laughs> the smallest part of the budget, but can make the biggest impact. I'm trying to um, make, I'm on, trying on to be food. a kinder, gentler Keegan in the kitchen. You're like, no cussing so much. <laughs> and like, so I made this coffee cake, <laughs> right? Be you. Coffee cake, <laughs> true. So I'd like, and this is like the first time when I just really unloaded. I can't even remember all the stuff I said, but I had, it was some crappy like, I don't know, Katie Spice from okay. from wherever that comes from, ground and from my, who got, I don't know. It, yeah. t- it might have tasted like cinnamon. I put a lot in this coffee guy. I just presumed it was a good cinnamon. Yeah. yeah. And I, what the, I, mean, I lost <laughs> my mind. What is this shit? Did we so grind cardboard? So glad cardboard? I was not in the kitchen that day. <laughs> I mean, it just, you know, I could have used a teaspoon of your yeah, stuff yeah, and like, yeah. I mean, come on. This is the guy that yeah. I went into and had a conversation, not with the owners. Yeah. With one of the people working retail in Savory Spice, and we were have a conversation about oil content and yep. this year's crop of cinnamon. Right. That's the kind of conversation I want to talk about. When you start getting Break above 14%, down. Down. Yeah. and you can burn your tongue on cinnamon because it's so fresh and it's a bark <laughs> of a tree? Yep. What? <laughs> I will marry you. 
You're welcome, Dan. Savory <laughs> Spice Shop. Uh, my beautiful fiance uh, he'll over be here. On <laughs> she might beg you That was good stuff. That's okay. That was, uh, Tonight's that was a good so special from <laughs> Studio Kitchen, Colorado. We're behind on a break. We're going to take this break. Uh, Dan, you're going to be on much, much more. We're going to outfit this kitchen. Uh, thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> He's got a roll. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Kick it. That's it. Mic drop. Say, say goodbye to people. <laughs> I will. Goodbye, people. Back to the restaurant. Come see us That's at Eber. Right. Open until 11. <laughs> Open until 11. We love King and Gerhardt. We're going to go in the uh, last stretch of this show. A pleasure. Uh, nice Saki. Saki. I like Saki a lot. Uh, Chris Stark is from Urban Farmer. Tonight it's been one of the better shows I could ever imagine. It's been so much fun. It's almost uh, this sh show sh should be the, the friends of Chris Starkis. All right, and over Urban and away. Farmer. Look at Little Rich Schneider is in the uh, sponsorship corner with the Chef Preston Phillips. I have no idea how this is going to go, but we're going to go to Little Rich Schneider right now. Thank you, Greg. Sp and, you know, in this segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about education and who better than uh, Preston the Prodigy Phillips. <laughs> this guy, I have seen him prepare things. I've heard him talk about it. He is unbelievable. How, how old are you? I just turned 27. Oh, my God. My, my boots are older than you are. My boots are older than you are. Well, hey, we're going uh, to escape for a little break here on the iHeartRadio. We'll, we'll be back in just a few moments. Okay, and we're still here on Facebook. So now, Preston, now we can talk about education. And I'm going to talk about education in terms of the modern eater. What have you learned by coming here, watching? And who have you met? Well, this is a hub. It's a hub for a lot of things. A hub for beer, a hub for food, a hub for distilleries, uh, all things hospitality. And so it's, it's very special for me to be able to come here and be a part of this. Um, it's, it, it's a hodgepodge of everything that's, everyone and everything that's doing well in this industry. So everything from tortillas to people doing great whiskey, people doing great beer, chefs preparing great food, farmers preparing great produce and livestock as well. So it's, uh, it's a big uh, operation going on here as far as people coming in and out and, 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 and sharing what they have to offer as far as taking what they have gotten from these purveyors or uh, the purveyors themselves being here to have, you know, one-on-one -on -one with, um, with the end product. So it's, it's really special. Watch it, viewers. You heard it from Preston, the prodigy Phillips. Go down to the grind as and check Blue him. As Blue Train Chef, I know the importance of quality ingredients. That's why in 2000... Okay, should we combine both of these breaks? to start a sustainable organic farm. At South River Aquaponics Alpha Glow, we are the leader in sustainable growing practices. Hey, Jared. Greg. Hey, should we combine both of these breaks? Yeah, I want to awesome. blow out No the pesticides, next break. no GMO. Okay, you have a live then in this one. Not kill this the food live production. Too. Okay, kill the live as well. Cool. Yeah, so combine with modern out technology the next, like, to bring you the uh, best possible kill this produce. Our gourmet mush. Okay. As as I'm just going to throw this iHeart one spot in this break then Thank we'll be you. good to go. In so our aquaponics system. Look for us in natural grocers, city market, and served on the plates of Colorado's finest chefs. At South River Aquaponics. Do you want booze news? Yes, We're please. growing greener. Okay. For more about aquaponics Thank you, and Jared. see our products, go to our website at southriveraquaponics.com. Yes, sir. All done. Uh, 138 from right now. Vegetables are so good, I can't live without them. Hey, Colorado chefs. Brian Freeman with Growers Organic and the Modern Eater Talk Show. Do you care about where your Sorry, food comes from? On. I do. Do you want loyalty from customers who care about that as well? I can help by providing top quality organic produce with reliable delivery, knowledgeable sales team who genuinely care about how food is grown, yes. transported, yes, and served. William. Chefs, Growers Organic Andrew, will ensure Jeff. you have excellent ingredients for your next James Beard dinner, my week? your nightly Come specials, on, or your yeah. regular menu items. Come on, Join man. the organic revolution and go you. organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Americans are always hands. on the move. That was They're not in a their car <laughs> or in the office or working around the house. Americans what refuse to sit still. <laughs> so how do you connect to all those moving targets? Easy. With radio. Actually, radio go reaches 93% of I Americans every this. week. 
more than Google, Facebook, so let's and not even really television. worry about but beer. Hey, We're going to talk about soccer and watch TV. Yeah. And then so when you want to connect with all those show. constantly okay. moving adults, teens, and millennials, don't really get worry to about the beer. We're going to talk about soccer and the beer for your company. Show. Cool. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, show, served by I Colorado's top chefs. And that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. What was he talking about? We couldn't hear it. Most vibrant tasting food. Man, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper local. Colorado grown. Cold pressed in a couple times. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Gold hit, Organic, man. and Dawn Foods. Yeah, we got the best oil in the world. Use Colorado you, Mills. Oh, we could get our now it's time for the Modern Eaters Who's in the News segment. I like my beer cold, my meat grilled, and my entertainment explosive. All we need is a, is a chair and a, and a cooler beer. Here's your booze news. Yes, indeedy, Mr. Tweedy. Booze in the news. All the booze news you can use right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Greg Allen back, Brian Freeman, Jay Parker, and Dave Avery behind the glass. And and uh, what, what man, that we have good chefs here with us tonight. Look at that. It's Preston insane Phillips. the chefs that have shown up in the second <laughs> half. Well, and I, I, I owe it in part to these guys across from us. Our Say boo- thank you. Our booze friends. To thank Urban you, Urban Farmer. Ah, oh, Chris. Thank you. Chris Sarkis did a great job. And uh, what a surprise. Chef Keegan Gerhard from Food Network comes in here tonight. And that was a good job that uh, Keegan did. I think he's listening on the way home. But in the meantime and in the, uh, in the between time, uh, William Stewart, Colorado Saki Company. Welcome to the Modern Eater Show, man. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, these guys right here, Andrew Moore, Jeff Tyler, Spice Trade, and uh, Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. You guys, you're killing it on the Beer Craft Show. Yeah, the Beer Craft Show has been a ton of fun. We, I think we've gotten a lot bigger of a reaction than we thought we were going to get. Really? Why? Well, I don't know. I mean, you do something, you think it's a cool idea, you never really know, and then it gets out there. And I think I think people have really enjoyed the history and getting the behind the scenes from from brewers talking to other brewers you know you're almost bigger than the modern eater show which no. i i Goals. hate to say <laughs> but uh, uh good stuff good programming and as we look to other libations here we yeah are you, allo- are, yeah. are you right? are you allowed to have other people than beer on your yeah, show oh yeah, yeah. yeah. that's we a drink all well, things. That's, yeah. we love doing that we had uh, Josh Taves from Nova Coffee. We had Penny Garrett from mm-hmm. Copper Door. We had Dan Hayward, who was on here early from Savory Spy Shop. Yep. That's part of the focus of the show is um, spreading out that understanding of what goes into the beer glass, the indus- not just the culture and the history, but the industry um, that pr- puts that beer glass on the bar for yeah. you beyond just the brewer. What so we you- can share some love with Colorado Saki Co. Yeah, what tonight? do you do about yeah. Saki? What Drink do you it. do about we've it? Been, we've been drinking <laughs> it all night. I think <laughs> yeah. that's what you do with it. It's <laughs> delicious. Yeah. It's put it in your belly. <laughs> it's a yeah. beverage that's been around for so long, and it's well, cool getting uh, revitalized right here in, in Colorado. Base ingredient, rice, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times, uh, here we are, we're looking at uh, prohibition, and we come into the United States. I, Andrew, I, I think we even have this conversation about it, no, actually, you turned me on to this, and I had some more uh, studying that I did. But rice beer, and uh, here rice we were. Rice beer? What? What? Yeah, what? rice beer. What is rice beer? What, what is rice? Is that a I beer? I, I think mean, what? We've used rice in beer. Is that what you mean? Budweiser? Oh, yeah. I mean, think about there's lots of rice. Think about rice after syrup, Prohibition. Curin. And people were going into a day and age to where... Here it is. Uh, the government wanted you to utilize some of this farming land that we had. Right. And uh, Rice Beer, you brought me into this thought process of, oh, my God, here we are. You're using rice to be able to make beer because it was feasible economically for hardworking Americans. Um, tell me more about that. Um, yeah, so I mean, remember the conversation. I think, you know, yeah, coming out of Prohibition, you're looking, historically, you're looking at a lot of, like, the birth of a lot of our farm subsidies and everything. So rice and especially corn in the United States, um, the go- you know, the government was and still is paying many people to grow lots of, of corn. And so 
there was you were actually taxed at different rates as a beer producer if you were willing to utilize corn mm. uh, than if you were using grain. Interesting. And we go to the original OG because here it is, sake. And as we bring on our friend right now, I think this is cool because William Seward from Colorado Sake Company, he said to me, hey, man, uh, I think I've seen you at Mats Matsuhisa a couple of times. You served me there, right? Welcome to the Modern Eater Show. About time. I know. It, it is about time. Uh, sake. You, uh, tell people all about sake right now, the alternative to everything else. Uh, which I think is the most delicious alternative. Yeah. So it's a, one of the fastest growing <clears throat> markets in alcohol right now. It grows 12% year after year after year. Beer is growing three, wine's growing two, and spirits are growing three. So, so year after year. And the reason because of that is my parents now eat sushi. They didn't 10 years ago, and, and it's slowly shifting. It's becoming that beverage that, that people enjoy. Like well, no one knew about it. It was just invented, like, what, 12 years ago? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. How long have they been making Freaking this? Freaking thousands yeah. of years. Yeah, 2,000 thousands years. years. Thousands of years. It's one of the oldest beverages in there. Does it go, but like, it's because now what we know, the beer actually goes back to the Egyptians, right? Um, where's yeah. the first documented sake? Uh, first documented sake was about 2,000 years ago uh, in Japan. Yes. In Japan. Okay. So, William, what's your background? Uh, server bartender for the last 12 years. Um, yeah. Home oh, and that 12 number I just really just... Yeah, <laughs> home, home brewer and... <laughs> so Matt Tahisa, uh, yeah. we met yeah. there, right? Yeah. Uh, he, he says, I, I waited on you at Matt Tahisa, and, uh, you know, you brought in a couple of girls, which was cool. But Matt Tahisa and Saki, I mean, one of the same, but... You, you, <laughs> What? what? <laughs> I love it. You brought a couple of girls. You, uh, he was actually with a couple girls. Time. What? Yeah. What? At the same time? We gotta, yeah. oh, can we talk oh, about how this is made? Sake is, is it's so a private unique. room. It's fine. Yes. Yeah. We've got to talk about how sake is made. It's yeah. totally different than beer. Mm -hmm. Okay, go Talk ahead. about it. Yeah, so sake is the only beverage that's multi-parallel fermentation. So everything's in there at the same time. Water, yeast, rice, koji uh, for four weeks. Koji, what's that? Koji is our equivalent to barley. So th okay. that's what breaks down the sugars and the rice and converts into uh, fermentable sugars for the yeast to eat. Um, so, yeah, we, we, you know, we're one of ten in the United States. We're the only one in Colorado, so we're just trying to push the, the sake movement, and slowly but surely we'll get there. What, nice. what do you mean by push? Why do you need to push it? It's just a... It, it's a market that's... Why is it a bastard child uh, of the libation? Because well, you got to eat fresh fish to even know about it, Why, right? Though? I mean, it, the market is so segmented. I mean, how yeah, do we get the yeah. word out? This because makes I'll tell my you, belly feel good. Oh, it feels <laughs> great. Yeah, it tastes good. Yeah. I think it's it really different does. than most other well, beverages. I mean, right. which I'll tell you, it's is, hard. Like Brian's yeah. point is you don't see it anywhere except... Sushi restaurants. Right. Yeah, right, 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 right. Exactly. You don't see American versions of it either. Well, why? Everyone knows beer. It's a, Everyone understands it as a beverage. Everyone knows wine. People are starting to know cider. But sake is kind of this obscure beverage. It tastes a lot different. Um, it doesn't taste like any other beverage, right? Yeah. And, and that's, that's one of our hurdles is removing the ver Japanese verbiage off of our labels so that people don't find it intimidating like a French wine. Mm. Um, and, it, and it's worked well for us. We're, we're in Urban Farmer, and Chris has been a big supporter of us. Um, the blueberry hibiscus is in one of their cocktails on their happy hour, and it's, it's why is it really so well. taboo? Why? That's well, fresh it's fish. Taboo. Babe. It's just different. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's different. People don't like what's different sometimes. Well, why yeah. don't you knuckle up at the bar and then? Oh of, my gosh! Oh, let oh, me geez. knuckle up. Oh, to here's some stopper. fresh fish oh, right there. What is oh, this? Oh, this looks amazing. Lordy. There's a swimming pool. There's a hot tub of fish in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> if you're online <laughs> on Facebook, uh, the Modern Eater page. Oh my god! Wow. Yes, you, folks. You want to get to the Modern Eater page right now and check out this creation that Chris Starkis. And Ryan from the Urban Farmer this is a piece of art put right down here. on. I mean, this is the whole night has been incredible. Yeah. I I I, I want to make sure we stay on. We got three minutes, folks, and I want to hit wanna this. I want to ask this, Brian. Yeah, so my best with three you, minutes. your gut is bad. You, you have a bad gut. Uh -huh. You can't do whiskey. Not anymore. Yeah, you can not do anymore. tequila. No, I do tequila, and I've been doing sake. Why? Why is sake so clean? Just rice, rice, water, yeast. There's no added sugar. There's no, I mean, it's not a fermented fruit like wine or cider. Uh, beer is a sugar wart that gets fermented. So 
um, it's very, very clean. Yeah. And it's 15% no, alcohol. Yeah, there's no residual sugar either, right? Barley right. has, like, longer sugar chains that don't get broken down. Right. So there's residual sugar no matter what. Rice is, like, there's really very little left right. after if it's done fermenting. If you think of Budweiser, Budweiser is more of a sake than a beer yeah, in its that's true. own form. Is sake they don't use corn syrup, though, so that's good. <laughs> would sake be good for people that are, like, <laughs> hypo hypoglycemic, the, your diabetic people? Would this would sake be something that those, yeah. those type of folks could... I want Just because the sugar change. I mean, I'm not going to. There's profile. a disclaimer. Sure. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fine. But, uh, well, he's <laughs> talking about the sugars. It's yeah. interesting it's, yeah. to hear that. And, I mean, and, and just where the sake. I, I'll tell you, I'm a huge fan because of the fact that I really like your original, or you call it your American standard, standard, American standard. Yeah. But then you, you introduced me to two new flavors tonight. I did. You introduced me to a Horchata. wine. A, yeah, well, the horchata, here, no, the horchata, but I'll tell you, your barrel aged, yeah. which was aged in a wine barrel, yep. oh, I told you, you what that reminded me of. That. I mean, this reminds me. A little me, bit of heaven. You're, oh, Is all day cup? long. Right. I mean, this reminds me of like those hot sake bombers. That have that have uh, I your hate purple you for haze. That. I mean, but <laughs> yeah, but this Socket is good. Should never be hot. That I know. That's that is. I, I can't say that word. I don't think. But we're on radio. But the, yeah. the hot sake is trash yeah. compared to what you have. I like something a that has hot sake. I really fillet. I see. I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, the only not time the time and a place. And we we yeah. do we do hot sake in the tasting room, but we heat it up differently. We're not heating it to 150. We're heating it to 105. So you enjoy warm, yeah. not hot. Kind We're not trying to hide our imperfections. We want you to enjoy those. Well, exactly. And see, there's this is why there's such a big conversation. So, I mean, our William friends Stewart. over at the at the beer show, will you please absolutely bring this guy yeah. over? Talk about sake. Talk about how complex. How about it Wednesday? Is. What are you doing Wednesday at two thirty? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> let's let's right. probably go to Matsuisa with a couple right. girls. So we'll, we'll like see Chuck Woolery we'll and two and two. On We're bringing yeah. these two together. William I like this. Stewart, Colorado Sake Company. Here we go. I want you to spend thirty seconds of like, why try sake? Why? So. We, we are the only one in Colorado. We want to introduce people to a new beverage that's been around forever, right? We're, we're trying to innovate the, the industry, and we're trying to show people what it can be and, yeah. and why this gluten-free 15% alcohol product yeah. is for you and for I everyone. Like that. You know? And we're going to do collabs with these guys and, and have fun and show what beer and sake can do together. Yeah. You got a great product, and I would encourage you. How can people get a hold of you? I'm sure you have a website. Yeah, they call my sales lady, not me. Right? Don't yeah. call me. Big Pippin's <laughs> got a sales lady. No. Well, no, yeah, yeah, no. Are you Visit in any liquor stores? Yes. You, it, name a liquor store. We're in it in the, the Denver metro area. That's but big stuff. Yeah. And price point? Is it a good, is it like something I can approach yeah. easily? Yeah. You, it's not $30 a bottle? No, you got a button up. 12 bucks. <laughs> 12 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> You're love, looking good. William Stewart, man. I mean, we, this is not the last time. And we've uh, encountered William uh, well, me personally, and I won't tell my background. Not just you. But, hey, listen, William Stewart, Colorado. Uh, is this your is Colorado Saki Company is really good. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, really good. Really good. Really. But good? it's a different. I mean, it is. I would tell you, this is not your necessarily it's traditional. Your, Sake. Yeah. This is not what you're. No, this is the not flavor. Yeah. your Jumai Jinjo. This which is. I like. yeah. This is. Yeah. I. I really like his product, and he's he's thrown some flavors out there. Part of that is kind of connecting to the beer drinker and the the alcohol drinker, not necessarily just beer in Colorado. They're used to ingredients like this in their beverages, and so when you put it in a beverage that might be kind of obscure, it becomes familiar because of those ingredients right. that people can connect to. Right. So I kind of I like that as a gateway to get people in to try sake if they've never had sake before. Well, William Stewart, Colorado Saki Company is our website. ColoradoSakiCompany.com. Easy enough. Boom. 15 seconds, Andrew and Jeff, Colorado. Uh, it's beer Craft. Beer Craft, Colorado. Beer Craft, Colorado. Beer Craft, Colorado. <laughs> Colorado's Craft Beer Show. Yes. It's on, on every Wednesday, 2.30, live. You can ask us questions live. We have a lot of really cool guests. You can pick their brain. You can pick our brain. Um, it's an awesome show. We're digging yeah. into some fun topics. We have some really cool guests I'm excited about this month. Yeah, we'll um, be talking all about ways that collaboration pops up in the industry. So, Good yeah. night. See you next week from Studio Kitchen, Colorado.